everyone, today I am going to uh, go over all the card reviews for the new expansion and how I rate them. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing the 1 to 5 star uh, list, and I'm also going to add in um, an S tier. And those are the cards that I believe are a little bit too powerful. Um, at the start of this expansion and will likely see a nerf. Uh, I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible. I am a priest main, as many of you know, and um, I'm not the uh, the most happy about playing against aggro, but I'm going to be as fair as possible and um, try to be as honest as I can. So right here, I am going to start out with the uh the demon hunter cards and we're going to go down the list here this is officially from the uh website from play hearthstone um, i'm going to start with demon hunter work our way down and then at the end i will do the neutral cards there's pretty cool neutral new neutral cards that i'm um pretty excited about seeing and playing uh so let's start out um all right demon hunter the first, uh, first one. Now, Demon Hunter got more cards than than in, in anybody else. Um, Demon Hunter got fifteen cards, where everybody else has gotten uh, eight. I believe that's how many they've got. Fifteen. Let's see, six, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. So Demon Hunter got fifteen cards. Everybody else gets ten, and that's so that Demon Hunter um kind of kind of catch up on that card play that they're missing out on, um, on the amount of cards. That everyone else gets. Ah, uh, so here we go. The uh, uh, Fell Screen Blast, Life Steal, deal one damage to a minion and its neighbors. Um, not a bad, not a bad card for Demon Hunter. Definitely looks like they're pushing uh, more of a control style Demon Hunter. So if you're playing some aggro Demon Hunter or Soul Demon Hunter, um, which a lot of people call like a mid range Demon Hunter, but um, I think it's in its class in its own. This is nice if you're for the support for the uh, that new control style that's coming out. Um, I, I don't know how well that's going to do, but um, life steal deal one damage. So at most three damage, deal three damage, one life steal with it. Um, so if you compare that to the two cost priest spell, that's two cost. Deal one damage to all minions and gain life steal. Um, that saw some play, but not a whole lot. Overall, this card isn't that powerful. It's good for the life steal, um, and it also combos well with the new uh, hero. Um, where are we at right here? Uh, the new legendary card. Your life steal damages the enemy enemy hero instead of healing you. So if you combo this, you can deal. At most three damage, unless 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 you have some life steal, uh, I'm gonna give this card uh, three out of five. It's not bad. It, it it's gonna see some play in some decks that are trying to run a control style. I just don't know if that control style is good. So I'm gonna give that one three out of five. Um, next card we have Throw Glaive. Uh, deal two damage to a minion if it dies. Add a temporary copy of this to your hand. A uh, really, really good card here with Throglave. So um, <laughs> this is actually, it feels kind of like this is going to be one of those cards that a lot of people are going to complain about, especially with the Pen Flinger that is um, that a lot of Demon Hunters are running. So it's going to be very annoying um, to have to work around Throglave. Um so this is a card I uh, will probably see play in pretty much every single um, Demon Hunter deck, I'd imagine, that is trying to do any sort of board removal, which pretty much all Demon Hunter decks are doing. Um, the reason that I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5, though, if you compare this to the 2-cost, uh, if you remember Cheap Shot um, from... Rogue cheap shot had a two cost that dealt two damage to a minion and had echo. Um, this is a one cost two damage, 
but it's going to help clear that aggro. So this is good for control. Control is going to use this to clear aggro pretty pretty well. And it's also going to be used to uh, aggro demon hunters. Going to use some of their minions to kind of um, whittle away at yeah, your uh, your other minions while they're doing two damage. And keep in mind, um, you don't have to use this and then use it again, use it again. You could use it, uh, kill something, hit, your, uh, hit a minion... Um, with your hero, with your attack, or hit hit it with another minion, and then use this. So this is going to have a lot of play. This is a 5-5 five, five card. We'll definitely see. is definitely something you're going to want to craft um, if you don't get this. Uh, excellent, excellent card. No reason not to run that. Um, here's a third card. This is uh, Redeemed Pariah. After you play an Outcast card, gain plus 2, or plus 1, plus 1. They're really hitting the outcast stuff hard with Demon Hunter. Um, this is, first of all, 2 for 2, 3, fairly strong. You're pretty much going to play this on a turn 2. And um, if they don't get rid of this right away, you are going to be doing some outcast stuff. Um, especially with the new line hopper that makes your outcast cards one, one less. You can draw. There's potential for a, um, a big draw spam Especially with the one cost Demon Hunter that gets you a uh, draw an outcast card. Um, draw a card if it's an outcast, draw another. Those kind of spells. So, really good card. This is a really strong minion. It's not too overpowered, but it's definitely strong. Um, I, I want to give this like a, a, a four. I'm kind of hesitant. I, I, it's not a five. It's more in that four area for me. Um maybe like a 3.5 but i'm just gonna go said four because it's a solid card won't see play i don't think in every deck but uh a majority of demon hunters is gonna run this um acrobatics draw two cards if you play this if you play both this turn draw two more this is huge for for aggro demon hunter um so if you compare this three mana draw two cards that's arcane intellect right that's what mage gets um <laughs> you get you get more effects so you draw those two cards and then you could draw more so if you're running an aggro deck and if you're also running um the line hopper here you're going to be discounting cards you're most likely going to play them it's very possible that you could draw three cards um or draw two cards after you have line hopper on board draw two cards those are outcast cards they end up costing you know one less and you, you most likely be able to play this um really great card but not not too powerful it's gonna seem really powerful in an aggro deck it's gonna feel really strong um but not too powerful in a control deck you know you just draw two cards which, which is strong but um when you compare that to all the other draw cards that demon hunter has this one um isn't as strong but uh so um a good a good aggro kind of um refill your hand refill your refill the deck or the uh the board kind of card so this is a good card i give the um acrobatics a four out of five um really strong card in the right deck which is what you want to see in a card um dread lord's bite Three cost, three two, outcast, deal one damage to all enemies. Uh, pretty good card. Not too shabby, especially considering that this can cost two if you get to discount those outcast cards. Um, really not a whole lot to say about this. Uh, it, it does hit all enemies, so when you play this, you're, um, if this is your outcast, you're going to do four damage uh, to either the face or whatever you attack so just playing this as an outcast um allows you to hit something for four damage really good card i don't think it's broken i think it's a very well balanced card i'm gonna give that a three out of five um three out of five is what i give to what i feel like is a really balanced card four is a little power creepy five is like oh my gosh everyone's gonna run this so that's, that's kind of where i put my threes at um the line hopper here uh, three, three, four, um, your outcast cards cost one less. So if you compare this to Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is a two mana, 
three two. So you get the same kind of stat line. Um, you're paying one more, and this guy can stay on board. He's a little more uh, sticky. Um, but he only makes your outcast cards one less. So by himself, he's not really powerful when you consider that uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice makes your um, all your spells cost one less, and a lot of the outcast cards are a one um, are spells. But he does kind of discount stuff that is um, outcasts that are on your minions and your weapon too, which is the new thing on this weapon. So uh, this guy is really solid. Um, I, I want to rate him a three out of a three out of a three and a half, um, but I think I can bump that to four. He's um, kind of on that little edge of uh, where he's a solid minion and he's kind of power creeping a little bit, um, but n not too bad. I mean, um, you can play this, discount your outcast cards, and essentially get three mana out of him. So, um, or three mana worth of cards out of him to make it so that he's essentially free. So I'm going to give that one a four. He's a really good card. Um, we'll see a play in... Um, in, a, in the aggro decks, I imagine, especially paired up with acrobatics. Yeah, really good card. I kind of like that card, actually. Um, as someone who wants to play like a control demon hunter. Um, Relentless Pursuit. Give your hero plus four attack and immune this turn. Uh, this card. So one of the big things that everyone has been talking about is how easy is it going to be to get your hero... Uh, attack to plus six so that you can summon um, the new minion that has rush for one. Uh, this is pretty big. Um, so three da three mana, four. Just combos so well with everything Demon Hunter gets. This is just a solid card. Solid, solid card. I imagine this is going to see plenty of play, especially because it gives your hero immune. So life steal so you can hit something um, but you can still life steal and you don't have to take the damage so if you've got six attack and um, you play if you've played this and you've got six attack and you've got life steal you're gonna deal six damage and heal six and take no damage so really good um, really good card however it's important to note that it's um, uh, give your hero immune this turn. So if you play this with other cards that deal damage to both heroes, for example, the new four cost minion that deals uh, four damage to each. I think it's a four cost. It might be a three cost. We'll, we'll look at that. Um, to each hero, you won't be taking any damage. So this paired with that is a seven mana deal eight damage to the hero, to the enemy hero. Um, and put a minion on board. Really, really strong card. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are using this to buff up their attack. Um, uh, I have to give this... Uh, it's like a four and a half, but it might be... Uh, it's pushing that five, but I'm going to give it four for now. Um, I think it's... Uh, I think it's a very, very... We'll put an asterisk here. Um, it might be... It might get pushed to five, but I think this is a solid car uh, four, four cost, uh, or four, four out of five. Um, Insatiable Failhound, three, two, five. So three for two, five with Taunt. Really uh, decent stats. Corrupt gain, plus one, plus one, and Lifesteal. That is, uh, that's pretty big. If you're going to be playing a Control Demon Hunter, this is the card you want to see. However, you do have to play a four cost first. So um, this isn't going to be rushing you down. Uh, I think this is a very, very well-balanced card. It's not bad. It gets Lifesteal. Lifesteal in this, if you want to play a controlled Demon Hunter, Lifesteal is very important because of all the aggro that is going to come out of this expansion. So I give this a solid 3 out of 5. It is a, a really well-balanced card. Uh, Fell Steel Executioner, 3. 4-3, uh, become a weapon. Um, so if you corrupt this guy, he becomes a 4-3 weapon for 3, which is really, really big considering that Demon Hunter was having a problem getting to 4 attack, having to pay 4 to get that 4 attack, so the, uh, with their old weapon, um, the new Relentless Pursuit gives him that plus 4 attack, this gives him that 4 attack, um, and it has 3 durability, so an extra durability so you can have that 4 attack for longer, 
uh, a lot of people are saying that you have to run uh, you're gonna be running ooze and weapon removal this this uh, expansion but if you think about this fail steel executioner um, plus the other weapon that they have this is essentially gonna have four weapons and remember they can just put this guy down for three for four three isn't terrible uh, it's it's kind of your average stats but they can drop him if they need to um, I, I really like this card in the demon hunter set I think it's really powerful very versatile uh, this is it, the corrupt version is pretty strong. I mean, become a 4-3 weapon for 3 is... And you only have to play a 4 mana. So, um, very strong card. Uh, this, I'm going to rate this as a... Um, God, it's like a 4.5 for me. It's it's. I'm, I'm going to put it as a 4. Because um, not everybody's going to run it. It's just a really strong card. So for me, Fell Steel Executioner is a four out of five. Um, Zai the Incredible, copy the left and right most cards in your hand. That's pre that's pretty big. That's a a two card generator. Um, and usually your left and right ha right most cards are your uh your outcast cards. So he's gonna be a good outcast generator. Um, this kind of this helps Demon Hunter also. Uh, Get copies of cards in your hand, which is huge. So imagine, if you will, if you're playing, trying to play a control style um, demon hunter, or um, even some aggro might even help to refill your hand because you can copy corrupted versions of things. So if things are corrupted uh, and they're in your in your hand, you've already corrupted them. You play this guy, you're gonna get the copy of the corrupted versions. So. This is a very, very strong card. I, I don't think, um, I don't know how other people are rating it, but I, I imagine it's not a strong card by himself, but it's what it's doing in your hand, what it's copying, the the corrupted cards that you can copy. And not a lot of, um, not a lot of classes can do that, can copy stuff in, in your hand, right? Um, and even the stuff that we see that gets copied in your hand, it's always been kind of uh, like a philosophy. You kind of have to have it over in your your left or right, and it has to be a demon or something like that. This is uh, just has to be left or right. So you can wait till you draw a certain card and play this guy and just get a copy of your big card. So um, pretty, pretty good card, especially if you're running any of the old gods. Imagine that old god is all the way on your left-hand side just sitting there, and you play this guy. You now have two Cthuns or two uh, Nazoths or whatever else, two Yogs. This guy is going to see a lot of play in anybody who tries to do a control or a mid-rangey kind of demon hunter. I don't know if it sees play in the um, in an aggro. <coughs> Excuse me, I can't imagine it will unless there's that outcast thing going on where you're able to just uh, start spamming outcast. Then it might see. Um, I like that card, uh, a solid card. A lot of people like that card. It's a very strong card just because it duplicates things. I give that card a uh, a five. I think he's um, he's going to irritate a lot of people as, as you play this guy and then you play two Cthulhu's back to back or something crazy like that. Can you imagine? Yeah, a lot of people are gonna be um, are gonna be complaining about that. I imagine. All right. Um, let's see. That's my four. Here we go. This uh, fifth one in this row. This the bladed lady. <laughs> so the bladed lady. So a six cost six six with rush is fairly good. Is is not bad. Um, but you're never gonna play this for six. You're almost never going to because your hero, especially soul demon hunter, is gonna be strong. Um, so Soul Demon Hunter is going to cut things like people are going to cut Horde Pillager. Um, they're probably going to cut their their weapon and rely on um, the uh, Fail Still Executioner to get them. The, so they don't need a 4-2 weapon anymore. They're going to bump their weapon to a 4-3 for 3. Uh, and Bladed Lady's easily going to be able to uh, get... You're easily going to be able to get the 6... Um, six attack there's so many cards that get you there especially with the new cards release i think that this gets um i think that this gets nerfed pretty quick because you're going to be dealing damage with your face 
um, and you're going to be putting something cheap and big on board. So you already have to deal with the demon hunter who's hitting you in the face with their weapon. And then this lady's going to come on board for one. And uh, and she's also going to, you know, she's going to help remove some minions. So let's say she hits a minion and she's down to a six, you know, uh, a six attack. And now she only has two health left. You know, no biggie. That's no biggie. You still have a six attack minion that they have to deal with along with dealing with whatever face you have. Um... With your Demon Hunter, I think Bladed Lady is one of the cards to look for to get nerfed fairly quickly. Um, I think she's going to get out of hand, especially if you have two of them. And especially, imagine if you get to, if you have Zai the Incredible, right? And you have a bladey, Bladed Lady on your left and right hand side like you just drew it. And then you pump your up to six attack. And then you play four Bladed Ladies, right? <laughs> I mean, you can easily get there. So, a 10, co a, a 10 play, for example, you have a 4-3 weapon in hand. You have your bladed ladies on your, on your, uh, on your outside, and you play Zai the Incredible. You play a twin slice, and then you play four bladed ladies um, for one each. Granted, that is almost never going to happen, but the fact that that's a possibility and that you can set things up in that way... Um, that just shows how strong, even if you copy one, even if you have a bladed lady sitting on your left hand side forever and you copy that one, um, you could essentially play three of them. So it, this is going to be, uh, she's going to, she's going to cause so many problems. Um, I give that an S tier card. I think bladed lady gets nerfed within, I'll say, uh, I'll say two weeks. Um, assuming that the soul demon hunter is still around which we have no reason to believe it won't be so i think bladed ladies the one to look out for uh craft that craft it golden it'll get nerfed and you'll get a full dust refund um all right moving on to the stilt stepper uh three cost four one draw a card so drawing your card is always good if you play it this turn give your hero plus four attack again this is gonna be huge with aggro demon hunter and also it's gonna it may s find its way into a uh, a soul demon hunter deck just because it can help you draw and if you can replace your drawing cards with draw and get attack which is what this guy does uh pretty huge i really like the uh, design on this card the stilt stepper four you got someone heavy up top <laughs> the one just a little weak little sticks on the bottom really cool design card um the card itself Fairly balanced, but the fact that it gives you plus four attack in combos with other cards that do ridiculous things like the Bladed Lady. So you can use a Stilt Stepper, play a Twin Slice, boom, you're you're at six attack. Um, and then all of a sudden your, uh, your Bladed Lady costs um, class one. So for six mana, you can put a Stilt Stepper up with four one. You can put a Bladed Lady for 6-6 uh, six, six from 1, and you play your Twin Slice, and your hero has 6. So you have 6. So for 6 mana, you can have a 6 attack uh, with your face to wherever you want to go. You'll have a 4-1 on board, which has to be dealt with. That's a big attack. And then you have a 6-6. Six, six. It's pretty huge. It's pretty nasty. Um, uh, this, this is definitely a very, very strong card. I don't know if this card gets nerfed to stop the uh, the comboing. They might nerf it to where it gives it three attack instead of four to make it so that you have to twin slice and then use your hero power to get to six. That four attack is is pretty big though, and they're doing that on purpose so because they've got so many things that give them two attack that it gets you to six. Um, I think this is a five. Um, is a five star rated card. I think that's a really, really good card just because it combos so well with anything. So, Stilt Stepper, if they don't nerf the Bladed Lady, they might nerf stuff like the Stilt Stepper uh, to be three attack. Um, I mean, the card itself is fairly balanced, but it's the fact that what it does. So, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I still think that's gonna get nerfed. I don't wanna bring that down to a four. I think that this. Um, it allows you to go face so hard, and it lets you draw a card. I mean, you figure one and a half mana lets you draw a card, right? Because the Arcane Intellect is three. One and a half mana is draw one card. So for one and a half mana, you're getting five stats. So that's not uh, that's a, that's about average. Um, 
and then one and a half card to draw a card. Yeah, I, I still want to keep this at a five. It's it's just I, I think this is gonna this is gonna be the combo piece that kind of chain. This is like that the missing link. I guess that's what we'll call it. That links all these other things together and allows you to uh, to get the bladed ladies out. Um, all right, I'm not sure how to say this one. Ilganoth. Um, life steal. Your life steal damages the enemy hero instead of healing you. Now. What's really important about this card is that even if you're of full health, you will do double damage because the life steal, before it goes over to your hero, it doesn't even get a chance to go to your hero. It goes straight to the enemy. So if you have a life steal, if you have your weapon is at six attack, right? If you have a six attack weapon and it has life steal, um, which you're gonna have to use the life steal weapon to do. Uh, so. That's going to be the problem because there's there's only one card right now that gives you the life steal for your hero, um, on the uh, on the weapon side, um, but also keep in mind that you have life steal um, spells and those are where this is going to uh, be really good. You can clear the board with your life steal. Um, this is going to be played with the life steal weapon. The life steal weapon like is going to blade is going to get up to six attack blade dance. With this guy on board, so he's gonna do six, 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 right to all the uh, to all the enemy minions. Um, you know, six damage to three of them, which is eighteen damage, which hit, hits you for eighteen, and then he's gonna hit you for six. So, very, 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 very strong card. This is a five cost. This is definitely a five out of five card that is going to see play to um, to try to kill you in one turn. The problem is that they really have no way of nerfing this card um, because you can't nerf this card without changing the the life steal. It's the life steal, really. The only way they could nerf this is if they revert the way life steal works. Like you have to actually life steal first, and then it does damage. And they're not gonna they're not gonna change this. So this is a five five card. It's gonna get complained about. People are gonna be tired of getting hit in the face for 25, 26, 30 damage. I mean, twenty eight is probably gonna be the the, um, I'm not 28, but uh, 24 is going to be like that solid face damage you're going to take when he does the blade dance 666 to, uh, to, um, to the minions, uh, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, not, not blade dance, blade dance hit, does your weapon, but it's the other one, the, uh, three damage. So let's, re let's go back a little bit. You're going to be doing, um, three damage, your weapons, uh, it's not Blade Dance as Life Steal. It's the other spell from Demon Hunter. Okay, so it's not as crazy, but they're still gonna hit you for like twenty plus damage. It's gonna happen. You're gonna hit be hit for twenty damage. This card's gonna be complained about, but they can't really nerf it, so it's, it doesn't get an S. It's a really good card. I like it for control, but unfortunately, it feeds into the Soul Demon Hunter, so you're gonna be hit pretty hard with that card. Um, Next up on the list is the renowned performer Rush. Summon two one one assistance with, with taunt. Um, that's a death rattle effect. So uh, I, I think, I mean, the power level that Demon Hunter is going. This could be a this could have been a three cost honestly a three cost with three three Rush and um, and then summon taunt. This is going to go into a control Demon Hunter. Um, it, it, it's just I, I don't I don't think this is gonna see as much play because I just don't think Control Demon Hunter is quite there yet. I, I could be wrong. Um, I just don't think this is as good of a card. This is probably the weakest card of the set. Um, I, I give I just give that card a two, a, a two out of five. It's it's gonna see someone's gonna try it, and it's just it's it's too much mana. I mean it's it's good for mana. To give you the corrupt on your other things, because this is what you want to play, so that you have um, removal and put some taunts up to give you to buy you some time to play the uh, insatiable fellhound and the <clears throat> any other corrupted cards. But it's just it's it's a lot of mana for kind of weak uh, one one taunts. Just we've seen that time and time again. It just doesn't really work. Um, so moving on to the very last card here. The Expendable Performers. 
Uh, summon seven one one Illidari, Illidari with Rush. If they die this turn, seven more. Now, um, they all have to die, so you have to kill seven. So if the opponent has, let's say, a four six Reno up, and you play this, you you're not you're not going to get full effect. You really can't. You they have to have seven on board. So. This is going to be good for a controlled demon hunter. They're going to try this. They're going to basically, you could do 14 damage to the board for seven, which isn't bad. Um, uh, unless there is some, um, um, and, and, and you can't have any board either because it has to set, it has to summon seven and all seven have to die. So if you have no board and your opponent has a board of 14 health minion or more, you're losing the game. This, just doing 14 damage, isn't going to help you win the game. Um, it, it, you just, you have to have nothing. Like, you have to, this is basically, you have to clear your board. Um, you know, if you don't have a board, and they've got something that has exactly 7 health, and you hit that, and then you summon 7 of these, okay, well, you've got 7 one ones. It's not, that's not really that strong. It's just kind of, you know, eh. Um, and it costs seven. Uh, I, I don't think this is going to see a lot of play. People are going to try. I, I, this is just, this is the other bad card that I think that Demon Hunter's got. Um, at first glance, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so good. But if you think about what you have to do, you have to kill all seven of them. And that's going to be hard to do. I give that card a two out of five. So that wraps it up for Demon Hunter. Um, Demon Hunter had the most cards um, this expansion, like I said, so they can kind of catch up. Um, moving on to Druid. So, um, Druid kind of got, uh, didn't make out the best this expansion, I don't think. Um, they got some kind of interesting concepts. So, let's go over those. So, first we have the Fair Arborist. Uh, this is cool with the Choose One synergy. Um, choose One, draw a card. Or summon a 2-2 Trent. So if you figure a 3 mana for a 2-2 and a 2-2 Trent, that's not too bad. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of aggro might do that. But in order to get there, you kind of have to do the overgrowth. So I imagine if overgrowth with aggro becomes a thing, I just don't see that happening. Um, a a 3 cost 2-2 two, two draw card, like we said, 1.5 one, uh, one mana is usually what's given for a draw card effect. Um, still not that good. You almost have, you have to corrupt this in order to get it to be pretty decent. Um, I, I, it's going to go really well with the wild. I imagine a lot of people going to play some, some wild, uh, in the, um, choose one, sit in the choose one, um, decks. Um, but I think it's overall just a, a balanced card, but it's not, it's not the, the best card. I mean, three mana, play a two, two, play another two, two and draw a card after you know, somewhere down the line after you've played four mana, so maybe on turn five, um, is 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 not really that strong. It's you get it's basically more of a draw. You're gonna use this for the draw more than anything. Um, three mana, two two, and another two two. I mean, aggro's already doing that. I I it might fit into an aggro. You know, as like let me fish for some more spells or uh, some more um, cards while I put some stuff on board. Um, I just. It's not as powerful as I think, um, as I think it could be. Um, so I would give, I'm gonna give this one a two out of five. Um, it's not a terrible card. It's just not. It's it, it's still, it, it's barely lacking um, in the average domain of where I would put an average card at. All right, next card, the Moon Touched Amulet. Give your hero plus four attack this turn, corrupt and gain six armor. Um, this isn't this isn't a bad spell. This isn't a bad spell. Uh, four attack is 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 pretty decent for three mana. However, if you think about what the Demon Hunter, so Demon Hunter got a three mana gain four attack, um, and immune. You didn't even need to corrupt. You just got you just got immune. Um, which is, you know, if you're attacking a minion, is could be better than six armor. Um, it's just this is not as good as what the demon hunter got. 
this would be good if you didn't have to corrupt it. I mean, that's what they're giving Demon Hunter, plus four attack and immune. But maybe, you know, with the six armor. But again, you have to play a four cost to be able to play this uh, before. So um, it's just, it's not as good as what Demon Hunter got, but it's not a, a terrible card. Um, I kind of want to rate it like a two and a half. You know, it, it's verging six, four attack, six armor. Uh, so we know one, um, we know that a uh, five armor is worth one mana. That's what a uh, warrior gets. So it's like you're getting one extra mana. It's not, it's just not the best card in the world for what uh, Druid needs right now. Um, they're not real, there's nothing really armor, uh, armor savvy kind of going on. There's nothing that, you know, no shield slam or anything for Druid, um, it, it, it could go well with the with the new solar eclipse and lunar eclipse, but the card itself by itself, uh, it, to me is just a two. It's just a two out of five. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that strong. Um, four attack is is kind of negligible. Um, the umbral owl here, uh, seven cost. 4-4, four, four, costs 1 less for each spell you've cast this this game. I mean, this is going... This isn't going... You're not going to want to put this into your uh, Guardian deck. But instead, this is going to go into one of those aggro decks where you're playing those spells really uh, like um, the uh, the Gibberling decks. That That's where this is going to go into. And this is almost always going to cost... One zero one or two mana, um, which is really good for four. So really solid card for aggro. Aggro is going to play this and um, and get a lot of use out of it. Um, it's not um, it's not on the level of where Corridor Creeper used to be because it's for each spell you've cast, which instead of each minion that died. Um, but with aggro, like I said, they are casting a lot of spells. You can get this down. You you will not be playing paying four mana, um, four mana or more for this card. You can be playing three mana for this card in an aggro deck. So this is a really good card. I give that card a four out of five. Um, moving on, uh, fizzy elemental. Um, you have nine mana, ten ten rush taunt. So the the prime that uh, Druid's got would allow you to play a card and then also get the Rush Taunt and essentially get more for nine mana. Nine mana is a lot to play. Uh, it's a lot to pay. Uh, it's basically your whole turn for a Rush and Taunt. Now, it's important that this is an elemental and this is not a beast because if this is a beast, it would be <laughs> pretty busted. So it's perp uh, with the um, Guardian deck. So elemental is uh, is really strong. Um, but not as strong as a beast. It's just kind of a... I feel like this is kind of a filler card. However, 9 mana, 10-10, you know, that, that could be good to close out that taunt game. And this is something that I imagine we're going to see in the... Uh, in the um, Hadronox Wild. If um, Druid wants to build on those taunt, those big taunt minions. This is the taunt with Rush, which is pretty big, because as soon as you kill your Hadronox off and you summon this guy, this guy can come and he can attack and do some damage. But it's just not good in standard right now. Um, it's easily dealt with, but there's so many things that could deal with this for cheap mana. So you're going to pay 9 mana to put a 10-10. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a 9 mana and you can remove something, um, but... It, this is going to get destroyed really easy, and it's going to um, it's going to be a, a huge mana swing, not in your favor. Uh, I give that card a um, a two out of ten. Um, Scenarian Ward gain eight armor, summon a random eight cost minion. I I dislike this card so eight mana, summon a random eight cost minion. Um, in, in a, a couple expansions ago, we had a priest spell that was discover an eight cost minion for eight mana, but you got to discover and you got to pick. And sometimes those picks you were like, eh, okay, I got some decent picks. Um, and they weren't the best in the world. Um, 
I, I'm really, really surprised that this is summon a random 8-cost minion and not maybe a 9-cost because then it can hit your Fizzy Elemental. But as you see, there's no 8-cost minions for Druids, so you got to go in. you got to check the 8-cost stuff. Um, so we'll do that real quick. I'll show you guys the 8-cost stuff um, that got revealed. And there... There's really nothing that none of these help you <laughs> with this card. So you're going to have to be, you know, uh, hitting some of the stuff that's already in standard and in the eight cost. You could get the dragon. That's probably one of your better hits. But again, it's random and that's the major problem. And eight armor isn't a lot. I mean, honestly, this thing could have said 18 armor and then it might be considered. Because remember, we said five armor is worth one mana. So you're like, this is like one and a half mana. You're paying 8 mana for random minion. I really dislike this card. The only time this card is going to be really good, though, is when you can play it alongside with um, your Kale so he can get uh, he can play, play it for 1. That's when you're going to want to play this. But who is going to put this in their deck to do that and then summon random minions? Druid is not good with just summoning random minions. They need to summon specific minions. That's why Guardian, uh, the Guardian deck works so well. You could summon specific minions from your deck. I, I just don't like that card. I don't see it getting a lot of play. Um, a, a big spell druid. It's possible we could see a King uh, Pharos um, deck with this. That's that's possible. That could be a thing. But I don't like this card. It is a... Uh, to me, right now, it sits at a 2 cost. Or a 2 out of 5. It um, It's just... It does, it does it goes against what you want to do as a druid. You just don't want to summon random things. Um, that brings us on to uh, our gray bow here, or is it gray bow? It might be gray bow. Um, taunt. Give a random friendly minion death rattle. Summon gray bow. I love this card because these are the kind of cards I live for. So five mana four six is not bad. It's really not that bad. And if you have Another minion hiding behind Greybow. So you play Greybow and you have another minion hiding behind it. You kill. You have to kill Greybow first. He's going to give the Death Rattle minion to that other minion. And then you're going to have to kill that minion. And that'll summon Greybow. And then you got to kill Greybow again. So imagine playing a 5 cost minion. Or play this guy for 5. And then a 1 cost. Something small behind him. Um, that's going to create a, a, a good little taunt board. And then both of those are going to die, and you're going to have both Grey Bows die. Um, and that's important that both of them are going to die. So you can have one Grey Bow die, and then both of them will then... Uh, you'll have two in the in the pool. And the reason it's so important to have two of these guys in your pool is because then you can play Vectus. And Vectus will have two of those little eggs, and they'll summon... And they'll have the Grey Bow thing there. And that's pretty huge. I really like that. I love the... Um, the way that this can move and put gray bows on board and then if you can get two minions with both those death rattles you're gonna get a lot of bad interactions you just need to have uh three minions total with those it's gonna go out of control crazy there's been a lot of theory crafting on how these are going to work and is it gonna be an infinite i don't think it quite goes infinite but it goes uh, annoyingly infinite um so it goes close to being infinite Annoying so that I don't think a lot of Hearthstone players are going to be able to figure out what minion to kill first and how to kill it and what order and, and doing all the math in their head of how this death battle gets plopped back and forth. Um, he's going to be extremely annoying. I love it. Uh, personally, for me, this is a day one craft card because I love the effect. I just don't know if he's going to be as strong, but I don't think he's going to be as weak as people think. Um, if you can find a way to get copies of this... And put two on board. Like I said, Vectus is probably your best uh, route of getting there. Um, that's what I would use to get that uh, guy out. So I'm going to look for ways to give Greybow a copy. Um, uh, put a copy in my hand. Which Elise might be the way to go. But then you're really, really late game to do Elise. So uh, you might have to run the Highlander version. I, I really um, I love the card. It's just not going to be as as great as I probably want it to be. However, I don't think it's going to be as weak as it's going as people want it to uh, think it's going to be. I give a Grey Bow a 4 out of 5. However, I, me personally, I give him a 5 out of 5 Grey Bow. I'm going to be playing with that. Lots of meme potential for me in the, um, in the coming future. 
All right, let's move on here to our next card. Uh, Kiri, Chosen of Elune. Um, battle cry, add a solar eclipse and lunar eclipse to your hand. Um, the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse spells uh, are, are really good. They're not bad at all. Um, you can... Uh, you're going to play this on uh, with for four mana, um, and then you'll get both of those, but you're only getting a 2-2. So think of like the four mana 2-2 two -two rush. Um, that has rush, and it doesn't really do a lot that turn. Um, it, it You know, Druid's not running that. Galakron, um, <laughs> it's just, well, I mean, they don't have a Galakron, but they're not running minions that are like four cost 2-2, two -two, right? So... They need the uh, so a four mana two two is playable if you've mana ramped up really quick. Um, obviously, this is more like an end game kind of mid game end game kind of play where you have uh, contested the board and you've got some control of the board and you can afford to play this guy. Um, that's when uh, the the lunar eclipse and solar eclipse. So by him by themselves, Kiri is is. Uh, it isn't the best. It's it's kind of mediocre, but I'm going to give them a, a 3 out of 5 just because of the spells that it generates, which are the important things, which you can still have the spells. So you can have three Lunar Eclipses, and you can have three uh, Solar Eclipses in your deck. That is very important to, um, to note. So you can run two of these, two of these, and one of these, and have three of each. So essentially, if you have three Lunar Eclipses... You could chain them so you can have two a two cost, three damage, and then do it again, three damage. And then before you do it again, right? You can play solar eclipse. And then this is then that can do another view. So this is a nice little um combo um where you can spend, let's see, two. That'll be free. This'll be two. Uh so two four so you can pay four mana essentially to deal like 12 damage to somebody's face that's pretty huge right so you play lunar eclipse for two your next lunar eclipse is free you play lunar eclipse again and that'll be um so you have done six damage um and then uh for so you have two you have one free lunar eclipse and then that lunar eclipse gives your next spell free so then you play solar eclipse which makes your next lunar eclipse cast twice so then you could do 12 damage for four mana 12 damage, but it's to a minion, and that's what's important. Um, so you can contest the board a little bit. If it was to face, we probably have some problems, right? Because people would be so mad. Four damage to face, but it's to a minion. So I think the cards are really well balanced. Um, your next spell casts uh, twice this turn. When you think of the uh, the shaman minion, where you get uh, uh, your next spell cast twice, but you pay one extra mana to have three three on board um that wasn't bad that was a, a a fairly good minion um but solar eclipse is slightly weaker so i think that these are just really well balanced um cards i'm gonna give both of these a three um which ties in perfectly to uh the um the legendary so we could see some shenanigans too with these i haven't really uh gone through in depth to see what shenanigans could come about by chaining the lunar eclipses up um to make your next spell cost two less so there could be some crazy stuff so you could also lunar eclipse right deal three damage to a minion and then play your 10 cost spell um this also could be active it could be an activation to help with your uh with your um with kale doing uh sun strider him um give, making these you know one cost spells so there could be some potential to be some craziness going out there but right now just stand alone as they are the way i see it these are these are balanced cards and again these wouldn't get nerfed it would be the other activating card um that gets nerfed which they've already done to sunstrider guess the weight uh really cool card draw cards we know a card drawing a card is one and a half mana roughly draw a card that's pretty good um, or pretty bad for two mana. Guess if your next card costs more or less to draw it. So here's the thing. If you're running a four, five, six mana heavy deck, 
this card is going to be hard to play. You need to have a low cost and a high cost uh, deck. So ba basically your curve kind of looks like a U. That's what you would want to run within, in a deck. And that might be an aggro. Maybe you have an aggro deck that later changes on to a high, um, a high minion deck. So you start out really strong and then you finish with some high minion decks. That's what this goes into. But... For one and a half mana, you guarantee you draw, draw a card. So in order to get your other half mana back use to make it equal, um, you have to guess if the next one's high or low, which look, we're going to say you get that 50% of the time. So 50% of the time of a one and a half. So it's about equal two mana for draw a card, maybe guess. Just not the best thing. I don't see any decks out there with Druid where they're doing... Um, maybe, like I said, you'd run that high aggro and then you finish up with the fizzy elementals. I, I highly doubt that's a thing. But obviously, if you do guess the weight and you hit your fizzy elemental, um, you can guess low for your next one. But, you know, what if it's the same? Then you get nothing, right? So it has to cost more or less. It can't cost the same. Um, I, <clears throat> I don't think the card is that great. I think overall, I give that a 2 just because it's essentially a two mana draw one, that's the most. Um, that's what that's what you're gonna get um, half the time. It's just a two mana draw one, which isn't the best. You would really want. There needs to be a, a if you can find a guaranteed way. Now it could be good also with pull Kelt. So this could be a two mana draw two. So with pull Kelt, so it could work in in that favor. That way you know. But I still give it a um, a two cost uh, or a two out of five. Um, it it's going to go on very specific decks. Next up, uh, we have the Hunter class. All right, so Hunters, I think, made out like Bandits, much like Demon Hunter. I think Demon Hunter and Hunter are still going to be on top of the, the meta. We're not going to see um, the meta. We're not going to see Demon Hunter or Hunter fall from meta. I can guarantee you they will not fall from meta. If you are looking for a deck to craft or something to craft, maybe cheap, um, the Hunter class with their their new uh, secret package, it's just it's going to be so strong. The aggro, their face is, is going to be even worse. We thought Face Hunter was bad before because they had all these little secrets that they were doing with their secrets. They're even going to be more consistent now, and they're even more deadly. Um, and they're going to put more minions on board. It's going to be a disaster. Face Hunter is going to be the deck to beat. Um, so let's dive right into Hunter. Uh, so <clears throat> mysterious win a mystery winner. Um, everybody's running. I'm going to tell you. So everybody runs the one cost one three guy where you're um, even Highlander runs it where you, you're uh, hero power can target minions because a one one three is really good. But a one 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 that discovers something um where it's not conditional to discover so think about the one cost one one that priest gets where they can discover um a, a spell in their deck but they have to have a dragon right and and that's with the class priest where they're not really one one minions kind of suck because you're taking yourself out of the resurrect pool um so you're really not res you don't want those things to be resurrected um except through like the the raised dead kind of chain um, the mystery winner is going to be a power card that, um, that hunters are going to, um, play, especially the secret hunters. They're definitely going to play this card because they get more secrets. It's going to be more, and then you're, so the part of the way you dealt with secret hunter now and face hunter is you knew what they were running. You knew they were running freezing trap. You knew they were running pressure plate and some of them are running it, uh, were running the, um, the pack tactics. Those are the three that they were running. They weren't running the other ones because those are the ones that really disrupt you. So with mystery winner now, they can play that one, uh, one on board, discover whatever secret they want. So maybe they have pack tactics in hand or they have freezing trap in hand and they really want pressure plate. They can, they can get that pressure plate. Now they have a good chance of getting the pressure plate or the new secret. This is a fantastic card. I, I love one, one value cards because they take no thought in putting them in your deck. That is a really great card. It's not super powerful. It's just a really good card. Four out of five card. You definitely want to put that in your deck. If you're running any, if you're running Highlander, you put this in your deck, right? Um, you put one of them, but definitely aggro is going to put that into their deck. Uh, next, the dancing Cobra, a two, one, five corrupt gain poisonous. So, um, 
this goes really well with the draw a beast, give it plus two, uh, plus two. So this would be a two cost three seven, which is huge because seven health w um, is hard to deal with um, on turn, uh, th you know, three or four or whatever you're playing. Um, you could play this on uh, turn three after you draw uh, it, it and give it plus two, plus two. The corrupt is the big thing here, though. The corrupt, uh, so you have to play three mana or more. This isn't a this isn't a card you want in your opening hand necessarily if you're running in aggro because you've got other stuff that um, is a little more dangerous at two cost. But this is gonna be more for those uh, a Highlander version where you want more removal. That's where you're gonna see this Dancing Cobra in um, because. Uh, Paying over two mana is easy. You can easily drop this on four. This can be a one five um, poisonous um, on turn four, which is you know five health is, is hard to deal with for some for some uh, for some uh, classes. You know you got uh, priest with penance isn't going to kill this. You know this is it's still going to leave two mana up. Even the that's where that two three um, secret with the poison it was deadly, but you could deal with it right away. Right, this is going to be a little bit harder. So this isn't going to go into an aggro, I don't believe. Um, I believe they're still going to use the the draw beast plus two plus two on their um, on their other minion that summons a copy because you get more stats. So this will see something some play in Highlander. It's a it's a really well balanced card, I believe, because two cost for one five as a beast is good, but the poison is to make it good. I think it's a really well balanced card. I give that a three. Uh, open the cages. This is a very nice. I love this uh, style of card coming to the secret um, hunter. Now again, I, um, I I don't play face hunter. I dislike face hunter, but I like secret hunter and I like Highlander hunter. I just don't like face decks. But this is gonna be like ties it all together. Um, Animal companion is worth three man three mana. Hunter always has two minions or more on the start of their turn. Because their secrets are what keeps those minions on board. So pack tactics, uh, snake trap could be a thing. They could bring that back. I don't know if if uh, if the snake is going to work its way into this kind of um, into the current face hunter. Because pack tactics, freezing trap, and pressure plate. You know the, the hunters, the face hunters put stuff on board, and it's hard to remove that for some classes. Um, because they attack it, they get back in your hand, they easily have two minions on board, and then they have their one cost guy that does two damage, so they control the board early. Um, so, a secret cost two, it's, um, it's exactly where the, uh, where, um, hunters do the best at in controlling the board early, they control the board early really, really well, they will have two minions uh, a lot of times, and here's the beauty about this card, is if you know they have two minions, so normally let's say that they had a phase stalker and they had their one cost that was a 1-3 on board. Um, if they had that, you generally wouldn't attack unless, because you knew it was a freezing trap or a pack tactics, pack tactics and you didn't want a second phase stalker coming out, right? But now you're going to have to because if you don't attack, if you don't pop the secrets, that was how you beat uh, face hunters, you don't pop their secrets until you're ready. This is going to force you. You're going to have to check for open the cages because if you don't pop the secrets and they have two minions on board and you try to play coy and, and, and hang back a little bit, this guy is going to summon a nasty creature. He's going to give his creatures plus one, plus one, or plus one attack, which is nasty. Um, he's going to have a 4-4 four, four taunt up, which is going to hurt because now you can't get access to their face stalkers as easy. Or they're going to summon the Huffer, which of course it's always Huffer, and he's going to charge and hit you for four. This is a great, great secret. This ties all the other hunter secrets together. Um, there was They were lacking a secret like this that punished you for not popping the secrets. And this is going to be the card that ties together. This is a fantastic card. It's not going to see a nerf because you really can't nerf what it does. But it is a, is a great, great card. It's basically a better animal companion. There's no reason you wouldn't put this into your deck in every deck. Um... Unless you're running like a big, huge, uh, a big hunter, like a big minion. So maybe the death rattle. But it's still, it's a card that a lot of people are going to complain about because they're so used to hanging back from hunters and not going face uh, and, and, and not attacking their minions, not popping those um, secrets. This is a card that uh, that's going to see a lot of play. It's, it's exactly what Hunter needed, and they're going to be even more power. This is a 5 out of 5 card. This is a really, really good card. 
Um, it's not going to be nerfed, but it's such a good card. It's going to be it's going to be it's going to be strong. Um, Trampling Rhino uh, is my next card. So the Trampling Rhino um, five rush five five um, card. Uh, after this attacks and kills a minion, excess damage hits the hero, the enemy hero. I think this is a very well balanced card. Um, obviously, if you give it, uh, you draw it and you give it seven seven for five. Um, he can rush out. He can smash the uh, a, a one health minion and um, and hit you for six. Right. So really, really good card. But I think it's very, very balanced as I see it right now. Um, you know, if this thing had Wind Fury, I'd be a little, I'd be a little scared. Um, but and it doesn't have charge, so it, it, it I, I think this is a really nice, um, well balanced, uh, well balanced card. There's really not much to say about it. You know, you want to ultimately, you know, if if you wanted to go for the buff it up and then deal the damage to the enemy hero, it's it it would work. But you have to have like a low cost minion on board. You can cheat out those little excess damage to hit the enemy face. Um, I don't know if this sees play in an aggro or a secret hunter. I think there's too much. There's too many other better cards, and um, this is good for that little bit of removal. But um, you know, a little removal and a little damage to the face to keep continuing the pressure. But overall, I think it's a really well balanced card. I give that card a three out of five. Uh, Jewel of Nazoth, <clears throat> summon three friendly death rattle minions that died this game. Um, so, Hunter uh, can run a secret package, and then after they run their secret package, they can also run a um, a death rattle package, possibly alongside of that. So this will be more like a it, it work more like a mid rangey instead of an aggro package and what they're going to want to do if you want to get jewel of nazoth to work is you're going to want to play the dark moon tonk this is a um <laughs> really awesome you know a lot of people are talking about the uh, the dragon the eight cost dragon but i think the dark moon tonk is the way to go and it's because these death rattles can easily like hit the enemy hero and could cause lethal you gotta be watch out uh for those um, so you could summon three of those and have it targeted specifically. You only put those death rattles in. You can, uh, and you can get more of those death rattles back with the, um, the three mana spell that a hunter has where they can pick that minion up and then, uh, and then have his battle cry go, uh, um, death rattle go off. So the Jewel of Nazoth will see play in a, uh, Dark Moon Tonk type of deck. Um, if they get to that late of the game where they've been building up, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be sick. You're going to want to, uh, silence, um, and, um, and if you don't silence, you're going to, you're going to pay for it with, with, uh, damage to your face, um, and even damage to minions, but it's still good. Like if you have no minions on the board, the Jewel of Nazoth comes out, um, obviously you're going to have to kill things with the Dark Moon Tonk. And uh, and have that go off, but you, this is the Darkman Tonks a really good trade type of minion because um, they can trade for a lot and then steal do damage afterwards. You got to be really careful. But the Jewel of Azoth brings those back, so it gets you seven, 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 twenty-one stats worth for eight. That's pretty big, and it's also might show a rise in uh, in hunters in the. Uh, in wild so i love this card i personally am going to give it a four out of five i don't think it's too powerful even though it's a it's a better mass res resurrection honestly because you could target it of who you want it to hit um but it's hunter is not a control style play but they could possibly build the deck where they um they do a lot of nastiness in the beginning and then start hitting you hard at the end um so four out of five for me uh, Rindling's Rifle after your hero attacks, discover a secret and cast it. So basically you get to discover two secrets. Now it's important to note that a uh, a secret <clears throat> that a secret uh, with um, it, if you already have a secret up 
this will discover a completely different, it won't allow you to discover a secret that you already have up. So let's say you have two secrets up. So if you have two secrets up and you attack with this, you're pretty much going to get the other secret that you want because it's only going to give you a pool of three and it takes out two. And I think there's seven or eight of them in there. So you're going to have a very good chance of getting the secret you want and it automatically casts it too. So uh, it's um, really good. I would like to, you only have two hell, uh, two durability, which makes sense. Four mana is kind of high. To get that, you know, this could have been a three, but it might have been too overpowered at three mana. Um, for, it's just the secret. It goes really well. Again, uh, Hunter secret thing. Secret Hunter is going to be a thing. It's going to be nasty. It's going to hurt. And you're going to... Um, even weapon removal doesn't really do it because he's going to swing the first time and get that pl and, and just have one durability left. So um, this will see play in a secret hunter but honestly i think the secret hunter is already so strong that if they're not running this uh they're running the other weapon i don't think you run both i think you run their their three two because you can keep that up kind of uh, forever so i don't think this sees as much play I, I would run the other one for more damage but this could also cause a lot more disruption um so it, it, I, i'm interested to see which which weapon everyone's gonna run um, this one obviously costs one more. I think it's a really nice weapon. I don't think it's it's not broken. It's just a really strong. I think it's a really well balanced card. Um, I'm gonna give that one a three out of five. I think it's very well balanced uh, with the way it sits right now. Um, don't feed the animals. Give all beasts in your hand plus one plus one. Corrupt. Give them plus two plus two instead. Um, this is. Uh, huh. So if, if 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 aggro hunter becomes a thing, this is going to be the card that um, that they will run. I just don't think aggro uh, beast hunter is going to be a thing because uh, if it was, then the three cost legendary that they had that gave all beasts plus two plus one plus one or copy the beast would have been a thing, and it wasn't. So uh, and this only gives them in your hand, and then you got to play a three mana to give them all plus two plus two. Um, you know, aggro. If, if aggro demon, if aggro hunter, if it switches to aggro hunter, and and hunter ditches voracious reader and ditches all those other cards that they use uh, to hit face with, and they put beasts in instead. But you give up that two mana play. You give up that little bit of tempo to build tempo later. Um, I don't think it sees a whole lot of play. Um, I just don't think. Like I said, if, if beast, if aggro beast hunter was a thing, I think it would have already been exposed and would have come out. I think what face hunter is doing now, they're not going to change anything other than their secrets, and they're going to. Uh, I don't think they're going to go to a beast mode. Um, so overall, a, a two mana give beast in your hand for plus one plus one is isn't really that good because we had a two mana uh, one one for um, paladin that gave all your minions in your hand plus one plus one. And then to corrupt them and give them plus two, plus two, um, well, you're going to have to play a three mana. So it's good if you want to build a porcupine deck. Now, that's what you want to go. So in porcupine decks, this would work really well. Porcupine lion, this would work really well. But that's not really that strong. Overall, um, I give the card a two out of five. It's um, for the two mana, plus one, plus one is eh. The two mana, plus two, plus two, really good. But Porcupine isn't strong. Uh, it hasn't seen much play. And I don't think this is enough to boost it. Um, considering all the other decks that are good right now are, are getting boosted even more. Alright, next up we have the Petting Zoo. Here is our huge... Uh, <laughs> our huge... This is going to make Face Hunter even more ridiculous, okay? Because Face Hunter is going to get... They're going to get secrets out um, really well. They're going to get them out fast. They're going to have lots of secrets because they're going to discover secrets. And this petting zoo uh, is going to hit like a truck. So if you have just two secrets up, a hunter can easily have two secrets up. And you play this, you have 9-9 nine, nine worth of stats, 3-3 three, three striders... I think that this is another card to look out for that is very likely to get nerfed. We already saw in the past what happens when you give Secret Hunter secret support and you paid 4 mana for a 3-3, three, three, right? And it kept upgrading for 5-5. Five, five. Um, for 5 mana, this is 
and they even bumped it to five mana and it was still really strong. This is three mana and the secrets can come out faster now because you can discover secrets with those early minions and the face stalker. This is going to be a nasty hitting card. You thought face hunter was bad before face hunter is now going to put out even more uh, little disgusting minions for cheap and it's going to hurt. And so you're going to be forced to pop secrets from Hunter because you can't afford Petting Zoo to be up. And you can't afford for their new uh, um, secret for uh, Rattle the Cages or what what was it called? Let me see. Un open the Cages. You can't afford that. In, in Open the Cages, Petting Zoo means you have to start hitting those, <clears throat> those secrets. You have to start popping them because if you don't you're going to be punished and you likely will not come back from the punishment so petting zoo at three where a lot of other classes in order to deal three damage to the whole board are usually paying three to five mana you know five mana uh the dragon that does three damage it's gonna be very very hard um priest has no way of dealing with the petting zoo right now so um holy nova is not enough how are they going to deal? So Hunter is going to keep Priest in check, and they're going to do it with Petting Zoo and the, and the Secrets. And, uh, man, it's it's really, really, really going to be uh, a bad, bad... Um, it's going to be a nasty meta here coming with Hunter on top. Petting Zoo, I think it goes without saying, will be an S tier. I think this is a card that gets nerfed. I think they might nerf it to a... Um, I, I, I don't know how they nerf it. So let's see, repeat for each secret you control. Um, it might just be repeat if repeat if you control a secret instead of each secret because it's really strong for each secret that you control. Um, I, I give Petting Zoo a tier S. I think that's one card that gets nerfed. Dark Moon Tonk. Um, this is the card that uh, looks really, really nice with the new Death Rattle Hunter. Um, Seven mana, eight five is a lot to pay. What are you gonna do when you drop seven down and then Demon Hunter smacks you in the face for like sixteen damage? <clears throat> so not uh, it's a it's a really good card. Um, it's gonna really really punish control decks. It's really gonna punish uh, a lot of the late game decks, but it's gonna suck versus all your early game. So the uh, Dark Moon Tonk is a nice um, card. It's really strong. I really like it. It combos well with the uh, Jewel of Nazoth. Um, I think it's a really, really strong because four. So four uh, missiles at 2-2 two, two, um, that do eight damage. So you could, in essence, drop the Dark Moon Tonk and then also drop a Broom. So for eight mana, you can have a Dark Moon Tonk come out, have it smash into something big, and then blow up and kill a lot of other little things. I think that'll, that'll most likely see some play. And then the next turn, you drop your Jewel of Nazoth, um, assuming you've had some of these out before. So this isn't going to be an 8-mana play, but your Dark Moon Tonk is going to be a 7-mana. Uh, possibly wait till 8-mana till you have the Broom. But that's a little late for uh, Hunter. So it looks really nice, um, but I don't think it's... It's it's really well-balanced. It's It's got a late uh, cost. Does a lot of damage, hurts con hurts uh, control decks, which is what Hunter tends to lack against if you're not running a uh, an aggro package. They uh, tend to fall off late against some control stuff. But, um, you know, rogues are going to sap that, obviously. I, I think it's a, a really well-balanced card. I like it. I want to give it a 4 out of 5, but I think just because of how hard it is going to be a play, it's more a 3 out of 5 pa uh, um, power level as far as I'm concerned. Um, Ma Maxima Blastenheimer, uh, summon a minion from your deck and also attack, it attacks the enemy hero then dies. I mean, that's perfectly what you would, you would want to hit Dark Moon Tonk. Obviously you want to, you'd hit face for eight. So basically like your King Crush, right? So you hit for eight and then he dies and then he does, you know, four. so if you play this and it hits this and the enemy doesn't have anything on board, they're taking 16 damage. And that's pretty, that's pretty significant, but you have to build your deck specifically around that, and that's going to be hard to do. Um, you know, that's not going to go off well. It's kind of one of those miracle plays. That'll be really cool if it goes off, but not going to happen. So um, this has to be in a deck where you have big minions, because obviously a small minion or a face stalker 
uh, it's terrible. You need to get that extra two mana out. Um, it's just not that good of a minion unless you build specifically around it, which uh, aggro is going to tear Hunter apart if they try to run something like this. So <clears throat> I give that uh i give i give that honestly it feels like a two out of five it's um you have to build specifically around it i don't think i mean if she hits dark moon tonk that's awesome amazing everybody will complain if but this is not going to be that consistent you're really going to have a problem getting <clears throat> her and then what happens if you draw two dark moon tonks before her so uh cool idea um it's gonna be ba bad on um implementation Moving on to Mage. <clears throat> um, Mage uh, did uh, all right. I don't, I, they didn't get um, all the support I was hoping they would get, but they did pretty good. <clears throat> this is their, to me, this is one of their best cards that they got, the Confection Cyclone. So two mana, three, two. Add one, two sugar elementals to your hand. So... Very very nice tempo and curve. <clears throat> if you uh, if you play this on two, you can then play you know one of those elementals, two of those elementals, and um, and get something on board on turn three. So it really works really nice um, to get some stuff to play. Also, those will help to pop your combo. So you play this, and then you get those elementals. You can play those and pop your wand thief, which uh, mage really didn't have a problem with running a lot of two cost um or uh one cost spells so not a big problem i think that this helps take the place um of um you could you could use this to take the place of possibly your wand makers but the wand makers are really still good too because they give you those one cost spells and all the one cost spells for mage were really good um generally speaking um <clears throat> i i think this is their they're solid card. This is a really, really nice card. It's not too powerful. I, I love the, the card art on it too. And not to mention it combos with the other cards here in their in their deck. This is a, uh, I think, um, for what the card does, it's not too powerful. It's really well balanced, um, but it's a nice tempo and it's a nice, uh, a nice tempo. I think this is a four out of five card. Possibly a five out of five card, um, really strong. I think every I think every mage will be running this. It's just it's you you get so much value out of uh, two mana. So I like the card four four out of five, possibly a five out of five, but not power level. Um, I just think it's a really really nice uh, card for what it, for the mana stats that it puts out. Um, Game master, the first secret you play each turn costs one. That's a two, two, three. All right, two for two, three is not bad. However, the first secret, so it's basically going to reduce your secrets to uh, by two mana. Um, honestly, why would you just not play Apprentice, uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice? Because uh, this only affects the first secret, and a Sorcerer's Apprentice will always drop your secrets down um, to two. So you could play this guy, and then play and get have a two, three on board, and then only your, and then you'll get. Uh, you can play a secret for one, another secret for three. So then you're, you're getting four uh, four mana for two secrets. Or you can play an apprentice and get two secrets for four mana. So why would you play this above your, um, your sorcerer's apprentice? The only thing I could possibly think of is that this guy um, goes into the wild secret package. That might be the way that people play this because he's essentially... Your next, uh, your next secret, you know, the other ones are your next secret cost zero. I, he's not going to take the place of those. I, I don't think, I think you have enough of those minions in wild to where you don't warrant the game master. I just don't see the game master being played, um, when you can play the Sorcerer's Apprentice and essentially do the same effect, like if you want to play two secrets. Otherwise, um, unless you're running a heavy secret package and you need those secrets out on turn three, um, you know, you can get them a turn earlier, uh, you know, aggro-wise, if aggro is really heavy, that could be, but overall, I think that is a, I think that's a two um, out of five, it's just kind of uh, a little bit below, it would be nice if it said, the first secret you play each turn costs 
you know, uh, it, it costs zero or or the next couple secrets you play cost one or something. It's just not I, – I don't see why you would replace um, – why you wouldn't put a Sorcerer's Apprentice in exchange for that um, just to save two mana. It doesn't, doesn't make sense for me, but we'll see how that plays out. Um, Firework Elemental, deal three damage to a minion, deal 12 instead. Uh, almost certainly will go into a Highlander deck. The fact that you have to corrupt and play a six cost instead before to get this out um, is uh, is pretty... I mean, if you could do that, obviously this guy is well worth his weight in gold as he can pretty much... It should say destroy a minion, right? Because it's a uh, deal 12. But deal three damage to a minion. I mean, we've got the other elemental that's going to deal three damage... Um, as well, and you're only getting three five stats out of a five cost. Um, it's not it's not bad. I think this is more a Highlander type uh, type card, and Highlander may or you know that some removal with some board are always good minions. Any minion that you could play a minion and deal damage and put stats on board and possibly remove a minion have always been good cards. They've always been really good. Um, but this means you have to corrupt him because three damage is kind of negligible around that five mana. You're really not going to want to play five mana three unless there's just like a phase stalker, right? You have to get rid of a phase stalker. You're going to play this. But you're you're at that five mana. Like you just wasted five mana to put a three five on board, which is easily removed um, uh, by turn five and six. So overall, I, I don't – I think it's the corrupt. It's, it's really good for corrupt, really good in a uh, – in a Highlander deck, really bad pretty much everywhere else. But the card overall, uh, you know, for me, it's like a two and a half. Um, but I'm going to give it three just because that Corrupt pushes it over. Like it's a two and a half uh, or it's like a two before it gets to the uh, the Corrupt. And then it's like a, it's like a five, you know, uh, after it gets Corrupted. Um, so I'm going to give it a three. I think it's a, a really well-balanced card. It's only going to see play in a couple uh, in, in a couple um, decks. Uh, Mask of Cthulhu. I mean, this is so you get to deal ten damage. Um, so think about Reno is six cost. You have to have no duplicates, and it only hits minions. Mask of the Cthulhu can hit minions and also hit face. So not as good as a board clear as Reno is. But it also could hit face. So if they don't have a board, if you can, if you could do something on turn six and cat and wipe their board. So uh, you know, a, a turn six where you wipe their board, and now they have to put more stuff on board, and maybe they can't, right? Maybe they've got um, they can only put something small on board, um, or even uh, you know, something a turn six, and maybe they throw a a cartoon to vendor down, which has four. You're still gonna do um, some pretty significant damage if you can just catch as a mage. If you can catch an enemy, uh, an opponent not being able to play something um, on turn on turn six, and you can drop this and hit ten for face for seven. I mean that's a pyroblast, right? Let, let's be honest. So this is kind of a it's a good board clear. It's like a Reno without um, without having to hide the Highlander effects. Imagine you you evo you do evocation you get mask of Cthulhu right boom 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 you just light up you just light up the board um, chances are that you'll hit the minions uh, the little um, one health minions really strong um, and let's not forget that this can also have spell damage added to it right um, so uh, really nice card um, it's a good thing that this is not going into a uh, a druid where they can cast this spell twice <laughs> that would be sick but this is still a, i think this is a really good card i really like how it's right at that seven mana that seems about right what it would be at i was originally predicting it was gonna be eight mana deal 15 damage randomly um you know as a piece of cthulhu because the other cards were eight mana but i like how they dropped up to seven dropped the five damage so it wouldn't be too oppressive because if someone's at 15 health on eight and you hit them you just you know it's worse than a uh a pyroblast so Seven mana, deal ten random. Um, 
you could put that in it's more removal you could put that into a reno deck it can also go out of a reno deck i really like it i give that uh card a four out of five obviously this card is going to be complained about if you don't have any minions on board and it hits you for 10 but if you don't have any minions on board on turn six and seven honestly whose fault is that it's really not the mage um However, they could use three mana to clear some of your board, right? They can do the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Then they can hit the uh, the um, the Ray of Frost, remove a, uh, your minions, and then also and then hit you, uh, cast this for six and hit you for ten damage. So it's, it's you've got a lot of good combo pieces, a lot of good spell damage. It's gonna it's gonna be using spell damage mage and and um, so remember Cinder Storm was five. Uh, five mana for um is it five mana for gosh i can't remember now uh oh three damage for f uh five damage for three mana so um so this is 10 damage for seven so cinder the cinder storm saw some saw play um at low cost um I, that's why i'm not giving this a five it's not as you know you have to pay a little bit more um to get that total 10 damage but still still very uh strong well, if you so if you think arcane missiles is one, one da uh, three damage for one mana, um, this kind of is overpriced in a way. But I think um, it's not going to be used as an arcane missile. I think it's going to be used more as like like a pyroblast type of effect. Um, grand finale. This is going to be uh, what a lot of mages are going to be running with elementals. Obviously, if you're running elementals, you have to run. The confetti uh, two cost minion and that basically will give you an eight play an eight cost play and you can uh, spit out three eight eight elementals fairly easily <clears throat> you just have to save that um, those little elementals in your hand uh, eight mana three eight eights pretty big pretty big play that's gonna and, and we're not even talking about how the uh, the mage already has an 8-8 minion that gets discounted on your spells. So we might see some mana cyclone stuff coming back. I'm matter of fact, I'm, I'm certain we'll be seeing some mana cyclone. Mana cyclone was already really strong. We're going to be seeing it a lot more. <clears throat> um, and this is going to be following up with that. Especially because mana cyclone could also give you another grand finale, right? So there's a lot of <clears throat> problems that, uh, that mana cyclone is going to bring to the uh to the meta and um it's already causing problems and was nerfed and i imagine this card is going to double down on that i love this card i think it's a uh, a good a good card but it's not broken by itself it does need combo pieces to put it together you can't just play um eight mana and get in and get you know you can't just get this in your hand randomly without having the other elementals however so think about the uh the druid the eight cost druid spell is summon a random eight cost minion right and gain eight armor well grand finale is even if you don't even if you just get this and you're not running an elemental build eight cost eight eight is is not terrible i mean it's just kind of average stats um even and if you could play one elemental the turn before like one cyclone and eight mana um two eight eights is huge so this is a, uh, uh, to me, this is a five cost or a five star rated card because a uh, mage is going to have more, uh, more elementals going in. They can discover um, mage minions that are elementals to help put off. Even if you get one elemental the turn before, anytime you see a mage playing an elemental, you need to prepare for grand finale because even one elemental the turn before is going to set up two eight eights and that's pretty big. A deck of lunacy transform all spells transform spells in your deck into ones that cost three more they keep the original cost um now i believe it only transforms them transforms them into mage spells I, i'm hoping it doesn't transform into other spells i'm assuming that they transform into all mage spells um the key here is if you can get five fives right if you can put a bunch of five five spells in your deck you can get um, a, a grand finales because if we look at the um, standard cards for mage that are eight cost, you'll notice there's only three. There's power of creation, the deep freeze, and the grand finale, right? So those are good five um, eight costs. The problem is with mage, um, 
you would have to be roll you have to be playing rolling fire uh ball and um apexis blast which is uh not that's like no mini and mage right that's the only ones who really run that not big so you're not going to be really using what could you possibly use these uh what could you possibly be running these mage um, deck of lunacy for my idea of what's going to happen is <clears throat> if you get deck of lunacy the good thing about deck of lunacy right now if you, if you get it off evocation is mage runs a lot of one cost spells so what you really need to look at are all the four cost spells that mage has this is what you're going to be looking at so fireball great spell right great spell for mage to have at four uh, polymorph another great four cost spell you definitely would love to have a Polymorph. Cone of Cold, arguably the worst card that they have, but not bad. It's a freeze effect, right? So so that's still pretty decent. Uh, Conjurer's Calling, everybody's going to be running they, they run Conjurer's Calling right now. Um, a terrific card to get. Uh, Potion of Illusion, another great card to get. That's four mana. And then the new Ring Toss, not terrible. Um, you're going to be playing some five cost stuff, obviously, to hit that. Um, but the ring toss can get you some secrets. So all the four cost spells that you can transform your one cost spells into that mage is running right now is pretty good. So if you get evocation off of the, if you get the deck of lunacy, sorry, off of evocation, these are really, uh, it's really nice to transfer all your one cost spells into four costs. It's not going to be too bad. So but overall, you have to build a deck like that. You're not going to be putting this in your deck. Uh, you're going to be putting your... Uh, you're going to be... Um, I'm sorry. You're going to be getting this off Evocation. I can't imagine anybody putting this specifically in their deck. Now, it's important, though, that the spells will transform into ones that cost three more. But they're still going to cost one. So, a really nice deck for Deck of Lunacy to work in, in my opinion are one cost spell, so a mana cyclone deck, the one cost spells, and then you do deck of lunacy, you transform all those into the four, you upgrade all those little low cost, one uh, one cost spells, you upgrade them to the four cost, all the four costs are really good, and they're only going to cost one, so you're most likely going to get like potion of illusion for one, ring toss for one, all, uh, cone of quote, all those for one cost are really good. Deck of lunacy could see play in a cyclone mage, um, that runs uh, Evocation or Discover a Mage spell that costs two or less. I think Magic Trick, a lot of people, you need Magic Trick, get your Deck of Lunacy, play the Deck of Lunacy, right? And then transform. So the card isn't going to be, I don't think it's going to be built into a deck, but I think the card is a lot better than people are imagining because all the four cost Mage spells that cost one are crazy good. They're really good. So I think that's where it sees play. I actually give Deck of Lunacy a three out of five. I think that's very well balanced because if you build a deck, uh, if you discover it and you're already running those one-cost mage spells, um, it, the Deck of Lunacy transforms those into, again, one-cost spells. Um, the Ring Toss will be a one-cost, and it'll be easily corrupted. So I think Deck of Lunacy is going to be a little better than people are expecting. I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 because you don't put it in your deck, right? I don't think you actually put this in your deck. I think you discover this off of Magic Trick, run a bunch of one-cost. It fits really well into... Uh, cyclone mage this is i think this is the card this is the this to me this is the sleeper card deck of lunacy is a sleeper card um all right and i know a lot of people are like that's that's bs that's a one card. that's a one <laughs> i think it's a lot better than uh than just just because of all the good forecasts the fireballs at one um imagine if it turned your deck and a lot of your one cost spells into one cost fireballs yeah the deck of lunacy uh, keep an eye out for that one. I'm giving it a 3 of 5, though, just because you don't put it in your deck. I don't think you put it in your deck building it that way. I think you discover it, and then you kind of go ham with it, um, with the uh, Mana Cyclone. All right, next, uh, Sage, Seer of Dark Moon. The um, Battle Cry, draw one card, upgrade for each friendly secret that is triggered this game. Um, so let's say you play two secrets, right? Uh, and then you play him. Six five five draw two is eh for a legendary. It's 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 not really the best. Um, it's you have to get that to three 
and you got to trigger three too. So triggering three is not always the easiest. Maybe someone hasn't attacked you with the uh, ice barrier the whole game um, and hasn't done that. Maybe um, you haven't uh, triggered your counter spell. Someone's just playing a bunch of um, uh, aggro. So this isn't the this isn't uh, the best legendary. This um, it, it's kind of mediocre. I don't know if. Uh, if, if how strong the secret package is going to be, I believe that the secret package is going to be negligible, but I believe it's going to be, um, it's going to be an elemental mage. More people, I don't think the secrets are, are, are as strong as the elemental aspect looks, but, uh, you know, we, we don't know. Um, it's all, it's all kind of, uh, theory crafting right now with secrets, but I don't think secrets are as strong as, <clears throat> as uh as they are obviously wild this this might see play in wild i i doubt it though just because you know ice block isn't going to trigger so this can't give you that you're really going to need this to get to three cards to make it worth it um i give the seer of dark moon i make i rate that a two uh, i don't think that's the um the greatest now notice i haven't rated anything a one yet to me a one is a is garbage don't ever play that um, I, I very rarely wait, rate stuff a one. Um, I might rate some neutrals here as a one, some other cards, but uh, I've got some cards in mind that I'll rate as a one, but I think it's a uh, very, um, I, I, I only save one for like, this is trash. Like you get this in your hand and it, it's hard to play it because it's so bad. You know, those are the cards that I'm going to be rating a one. So two is just, you know, you get it and you're like, yeah, I can play this, but <clears throat> And I have to do some stuff for it, and even then, it's kind of eh. So that's why I'm rating this uh, a two. Um, Occult Conjurer, uh, Battle Cry. If you control a secret, summon a copy of this. So you could play a secret on three that they might not be able to pop. So save uh, Flame Ward or um, or something else, a Counter Spell maybe, and they don't want to use theirs. Uh, that would be a perfect example. You play three uh play a counter spell and maybe they already used their coin so they don't want to cast the spell so now they're playing minions and they're waiting to find their one cost spell to try to pop your counter spell this can come down on four and all of a sudden you got two four fours that's pretty strong um but again is secret mage really going to see that much play i don't think secret mage is going to see that much play because secrets are generally better left uh, if you discover them there's only a few secrets you actually put in your deck to kind of counter stuff because the mage secrets are so expensive. Um, I don't think secret mage will get much of a, uh, will get much love and much play in this meta. Um, at least the secrets might, but the secret package, like these kind of cards probably won't see much play, but overall it's, I think it's a fairly, uh, it's a fairly balanced card. You have to be able to play a three mana, um, and then play her. So essentially, you're getting another four four for three mana if you think about it, uh, plus whatever your um, your secret is. So uh, I, I give her a three out of five. I don't think you're going to see her built around. I think she's just kind of an average card. I don't think we'll be seeing her because um, she works more like an aggro kind of card, like we're putting out more minions for better stats to contest. But Mage doesn't really do that too well. Mage does it better by spells. They control the board with spells a lot better right now. Um, the secret, rigged fair game. If you didn't take any damage during your opponent's turn, draw three cards. Uh, so draw three for three, unless you take damage. Um, Mage has a lot of freeze effects, so they can ray of frost and keep you, um, you know, they can play this on three, and then whenever they're ready to draw three, they can just freeze your board, because they freeze a lot right now. Um, the big thing is the weapons. They're going to have to deal with uh, Demon Hunter. It's going to be hard to get this off with a Demon Hunter. If you have Ice Barrier and you put Ice Barrier up and you get armor and you, and you, you still count as taking damage, even though it's hitting your armor, that still counts as taking damage. This is going to be, uh, we saw a Paladin Secret that was a one, um, I'm sorry, the Paladin Secret was a, uh, if you don't take any damage, summon a 3-6 with Taunt. And that saw no play whatsoever. It only saw play if you somehow got it through um, other discovery effects or, or random effects. Um, so this is the secret. It's not bad. Drawing three cards is, is, is fairly good. You're not going to take damage every time. Um, it's just kind of an average secret. It's not, it's not the best secret that they have. Um, and Mage um, 
isn't really hurting in drawing cards right now. They're, they're using cram session and they're drawing, you know, two or three cards for two. Uh, so this is, this might just be a secret. Like if you discover with it, with ring toss, you're going to put up, but I don't think anybody's actually putting this in their, uh, in their deck. So, um, arcane intellect is three mana, draw two cards right now. Um, this is three mana, draw three cards, but whenever the opponent decides you want to draw three cards, right? So I give that secret a two out of uh, a two out of five. It's um, I don't think anybody's specifically putting that in their deck. It's only going to be used as a discover. And then when you ring toss, honestly, if I had if I was seeing rigged fair games and I had counter spell, I'm going to be choosing counter spell almost almost you know ninety percent of the time unless my hand is low, like I, I blew my load and I want to draw more cards. So this would be a refill maybe for mana cyclone. But again, I don't think anybody's going to put it in their deck. We can see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe three mana, draw three isn't is is good. But uh, a lot of people can can uh, can keep potentially uh, putting damage in your face, especially Hunter and um, and the uh, and Demon Hunter, which are you know so happen to be the top of the meta right now. So it's going to be hard. Uh, I don't think that sees much play in a deck other than Discovery. And <clears throat> the final card. For mages, ring toss. Uh, <clears throat> four cost, uh, discover a secret and cast it. Uh, corrupt, discover two instead. So if I've got a um, an ice barrier up and I want to discover a secret, ice barrier is not going to be the one that's um, that's given to me. It's going to show me three other ones, so I could probably get counter spell or something like that. Um, this It sucks for the man. Four cost just to discover a secret and then cast it is is bad like that could be you could argue that three costs discover a secret and cast it would be better um consider the uh the mate or the the hunter who gets a four cost weapon and then gets to attack discover and cast and then when they attack again they're always going to use that right but also that's a legendary um so you have to use a five cost so again this isn't going to see play in a secret hunter i i do not believe it'll see play in a secret hunter um, built specific deck. I don't think it'll see play in a mana cyclone deck. It will see play possibly in a Highlander deck though, because a Highlander deck can now cut their secrets out that they were using, because some of them were running Ice Barrier. Um, they're going to have these uh, a whole bunch of cards that are five or more, and they'll be able to corrupt this a lot easier. Um, uh, but it's just still, it's it's only going to see play in that in Highlander. I don't think it's going to see play anywhere else. I give this a two out of um, two out of five. So, um, the card to look out for, for me is the, uh, is the grand finale. I think that's the best, uh, in, in confection cyclone is also possibly a five rated card. I, you know, I should probably bump that to five. I'm debating. It's just, it's not too powerful. I think it's really well balanced, but it's a little bit better than balanced, right? Cause you get the two, one, two, it's really good tempo. Um, and one twos are, are really nice for one. Um, so I'm going to keep that at a four for now because this is the driving engine for the grand finale. But the, the Confection Cyclone, um, really good, uh, still really good overall. I'll keep it at a four for now. It's not breaking the meta. It's giving mages exactly what they need, the nice power curve. <clears throat> All right, moving on to uh, Paladin cards. Um, first one, Red Scale, Dragon Tamer, Death Rattle, Draw Dragon, A. Hey, Murlocs, they're trying to do this weird Murloc dragon synergy. Remember where they have the dragon that gives you Murlocs um, a uh, divine shield? Well, now Paladin can play Murlocs and get that dragon to give them Murloc. So we might see some Murloc Paladin because it was trying to do something in the meta, but it wasn't really ever getting there. This might help, but it's also good for non Murloc decks. You can specifically draw a dragon and a tutored a 2 3. Two mana is good. A two mana, two, three specifically draw something is really good, right? Especially if you're drawing um, a, a pure paladin. This could help pull those pieces. This would be a nice two play for a pure paladin. Um, I don't know what dragon they would put in yet. I got to kind of look at all the dragons to see what they would want to do. Um, let's see. Actually, let's take a, I don't think they got any specific dragons. No, they didn't get any dragons. Here, let's check out their standard cards. Uh, none of them come to mind that are dragons. Um, so, okay, here we go. The Bronze Explorer. I saw some of the, uh, some, um, pure paladins were running the, uh, 
the Bronze Explorer. This would be the only one. The other ones are kind of negligible because these you can discover off the Bronze Explorer. So this is what I would be. I, I would probably run this in the Pure Paladin with the Bronze Explorer. I might run that option. Um, you know, maybe a, a, a Pure Paladin Highlander. Who knows what's out there right now or what could be out there. So this isn't too bad. I, I, I like that card. I think it's, um, I think it's a nice uh, tutor draw. Um, which is always good. It's not too powerful. <clears throat> um, I give that card a 4 out of 5. I think it's really nice. Um, 2 mana, 2, 3. If it was just 2 mana, 2, 3 draw, it would be a 3. But specific a dragon, we got to bump that up to a 4. It's, it's really good. Uh, snack run. Discover a spell. Restore health to your hero equal to its cost. This is huge. However, we have to keep in mind a lot of paladin spells are secrets and a lot of them are one cost. So... You, you discover a, a spell, it's a one cost, you, you, you restore one, and it's kind of iffy, right? It's, you know, who cares about that? But you want to pick up those bigger spells. And um, <clears throat> they didn't give uh, the Paladin any big spells. Like they gave him Day at the Fair isn't really a big one. And I'll show you guys the uh, standard cards that are running right now in uh, Paladins that are spells. So this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. They got all these one. They got some twos. And then you got two. So where's the big spells that you're getting? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. <clears throat> we want to tell it to filter card type spells because we're not being fair here. Here we go. So um, look at all these one cost spells. These are these are the things you could discover and it can give you three one cost. Look at this. This is your problem with that card. You're going to be getting a lot of one cost spells. Even if you get a two cost, you don't even want a two cost. What you're really aiming for is these higher things. So if it gives you, this is what you would want to hit, right? Librum of Hope. This would be the perfect thing because if you hit Librum of Hope in a spell pound and perfect, you could also pick up, you know, Avenging Wrath, uh, Blessing of Authorities, huge Lay on Hands. All these are nice, but you've got so many in this low, you know, one, we'll say two mana, discover a spell. A four on average. So half of your time, you're going to be four and, uh, and and higher. And the other half, you're going to be three. You know, actually going to be more than half. You're probably going to be on average, you're going to see a three. Uh, that's a major, a major concern with that. So I would, uh, oh, let's clear this out. Spell, Paladin, back to So overall, <clears throat> um, it's a good spell. I like how it's a discover. Uh, if it gives you a bunch of one ones and it gives you, you know, some some garbage cards, that's pretty bad. But the fact that you get to discover a card is nice, and it'd be nice if you hit the high health. Um, I, I want to rate this like a three and a half, but I can't quite give it that half because there's too many low cards right now for Paladin because of their secrets. This would be an awesome card if it was like Mage, right? Uh, Mage, where you have um, a little bit higher spells. I'm going to give that card a three. I don't know if it actually gets put into any decks. It might because it would be beautiful you hit Librum, but the chance of hitting Librum of Hope is so small. you got so many so many spells in Paladin that you just you can't chance that. So it's kind of a, just a eh spell. Um, Carnival Barker, whenever you summon a one health minion, give it plus one, plus two. Now the big thing here is it's three mana. This is huge and wild. This is huge, but I'm not rating for wild. I'm actually rating for standard. So... Um, this is, you know, you play this for three, you do your hero power for two, you've got five mana, uh, that you spent, but you get a three, two and a, uh, and a two, three on board for three mana. So it's good eh, kind of average for a five. Um, however, you want to, you definitely want to combo the carnival barker with the day at the fair. Now these six, uh, six right here is, is a good little combo. And then obviously if you have, um, uh, if you've played um, the uh, the legendary here, they all get divine shield. Then things start getting kind of nasty. But it it is it better than Liberum Paladin? Is is Liberum Paladin is so strong right now? I don't think um, the Silverhand Recruit or Dude Paladin is really going to be that much stronger. I just don't see that happening. Uh, I believe that we will uh, see this in Wild. We will. Um, possibly see day at the fair at wild um we almost certain we'll see the new legendary at wild but this will i believe we'll see this at wild because the other it'll replace the give when you summon a one health minion give it divine shield this might replace that or at least they'll be running this as a one-off or the other one as a one-off it's really good in wild 
uh, Carnival Barker. Uh, I'm going first standard though. I still have to get to three. I don't think it sees um, a bunch of play in standard. It sees probably sees a bunch of play in wild though. Oh my yog! This is the this is the best uh, this is the best titled um, uh, card. <laughs> when when your opponent casts a spell, they instead cast a random one of the same cost. Okay, so check this out. This is the biggie. Um, I, I I looked at all the spells that. Uh, in, in how big they are in standard and how big the pool is the nine the nine mana spells are going to be the biggest um and here's why there's only three there's only three nine mana spells there is liberum of hope there's mass resurrection and there's plague of death that's it there's no other nine i didn't check oh let me check to be fair we do have to check dark moon um let me see if there's any nine mana spells here so we're going to go card type spell uh, none. So there's no spells in the uh, in the nine mana. So that's going to be a major problem because your paladin right here can shut down. Nine. You play this on eight. If they play a nine mana spell, it's going to be plague of death, and they're going to destroy the whole board. So you essentially will have like a twisting net or a, a plague of death, but twisting nether. Um, effect where you destroy their whole board uh they're gonna have mass resurrection which you know could be good or bad that could not go your way as oh my yog and then uh it could hit uh oh what i say the other one was uh liberum of hope so there's two two out of those spells two of those three are good that would be really good um but what are they casting on the other side so let's say they're casting plague of death well, it's not going to cast Plague of Death again. It's going to cast Librum of Hope or it's going to cast Mass Resurrection. Both of those are good, but they're not wiping the board like you want. So that's going to be bad for them. If they play the 9 cost Mass Resurrection, it's going to cancel that, right? Um, and then it's going to cast Plague of Death, which could be bad for you because if they were playing Mass Resurrection, they were probably playing it when they didn't have a full board and you did and they were trying to Mass Resurrect. So instead of that Plague of Death will wipe your board, but at the same time, it's not giving them mass resurrection. So I would call that a plus. Obviously, you wouldn't play Oh My Yog if you have a big, huge board. At least I, I wouldn't. Um, um, or a uh, Librum of Hope. So if they play mass resurrection, um, they get a Librum of Hope instead. That's good for you. If they play a Plague of Death and they get a Librum of Hope and Death, that's good for you too. So two out of three times of a nine cost, this is going to be good for you. Um, so... Keep that in mind when you when you think the opponent's going to play a nine cost. It's also important to remember coin is not going to help them here. Okay, coin has a chance of hitting the uh, it can hit the the um, the priest spell that gets rid of all your mana to destroy a minion. So if they have ten mana, right, or they have nine mana or whatever mana they have, and you play Oh My Yog and they have a coin, that's when that's when you really want to play it, right? When, the, when they still have the coin and they have high mana because you can play Oh My Yog and there's a chance that they'll coin first, right? And the coin could hit that spell and just destroy other mana and just basically end their turn. So Oh My Yog is a really good card, but it can backfire. So you have to keep in mind what when you're going to... Uh, a lot of people have to start thinking about what card they're playing and what cost and what are the cards are in there. You know, maybe the four pool mana uh pool is better for you to play to check for my oh my yog so we'll have to go through all that but i think oh my yog i love this it's it's the best i think it's by far the best paladin uh secret that paladin has ever gotten i, I they i don't know if paladin's gonna start running wand makers or spellkins to try to get the oh my yog probably not because it's not there's too many one cost uh spells right now for uh for paladin i think think that some paladins are actually going to run oh my yog in their this might be the first secret that you actually run in your deck that um is kind of a one-off you know instead of a you know not a secret package obviously this isn't a spell that you want to play um when you're having your secrets trigger twice keep that in mind you don't want your secrets to trigger twice with oh my yog um but i think people are going to run this and it's going to be a nice hit off of the seven cost uh minion that um pure paladin is running right now if they get oh my yog it's gonna be great you know they're gonna they're gonna want to play that so oh my yog i give that that is a five i love that secret i think it's really good i think it's really powerful it's kind of a counter spell but kind of not but either way you're not playing the spell that you originally wanted to play you're it's gonna play something random um so keep that in mind it's really good i think um really good players are gonna make use of that 
Uh, Lothraxian, the redeemed. For the rest of the game, this after you summon a Silverhand Recruit, give it Divine Shield. Uh, I, five five uh, mana. Uh, a five five for five mana as a demon too. That's kind of weird, right? Uh, Paladin with a demon. Um, it is is fairly decent, but the big thing is the Silverhand Recruits. Now I don't. You know, Divine Shield on, on Silverhand Recruits at a 1-1 aren't the biggest thing in the world. You would have to buff them. Um, but it does make your hero power a little bit. So think of this as um, upgrade your hero power to, you know, to give your minion, uh, your your guy a 1-1 a, a um, with Divine Shield. That's that's not too bad. That's actually uh, a, a pretty good um, thing to grab. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be running that... They might run it in Pure Paladin. I, I, Pure Paladin is not based around the hero power, though. I believe that this is going to be uh, seen more in the... Um, if you get rid of the three-cost mi minion in um, in Wild and run Carnival Barker and run the Redeemed instead, I think that replaces that. So lots of play in, uh, in Wild. But for Standard, I'm going to have to give this a 3 out of 5. It's just not the the. It's it's good. It's really balanced. Um, but in dude paladin, in uh, in for odd paladin, it's it's insane because you're gonna get a lot more effect. Um, all right, moving on to high exart Ural. I think I said that right. If your deck has no neutral cards, gain rush, life steal, taunt, and divine shield. All right, so this is the eight cost Ziliax, basically. Uh, this is huge. Ziliax was a 5 out of 5 card. Paladin's getting their own Ziliax, essentially. And they're getting Lifesteal and Taunt and Rush and Divine Shield. Everything Paladin wants, right? Beautiful card. You're going to get this card sometimes off of uh, the 7 card. Pure Paladin. This basically makes Pure Paladin even more strong. As if they weren't strong enough, Pure Paladin, Liberum Paladin is, uh, is going to be a thing. This is going to hurt. This is Zeliax. This is a five out of five card. This is uh, this is Paladin's replacement for Zeliax. Um, it's just it's really really nice. That's I can't imagine anyone any pure Paladin not running that card. Uh, Balloon Merchant, give your Silverhand recruits plus one attack and Divine Shield. All right, it's good that it's four, so it can't go into Odd Paladin Wild. But again, um, you have to use this. After you summon Silverhand Recruits. And how are you summoning Silverhand Recruits here in um, in uh, in Standard? Well, you're pretty much using Day at the Fair, and that's about it. I mean, you can summon five. So if, if, you, if you do this combo here, you play a four-cost minion, right? <clears throat> or four-cost card, and this is Corrupted. It's five. So for nine mana, you can have a three-five, and then you can have five uh, Silverhand Recruits that have plus one attack. It's really not all that threatening. I mean, those are easy to deal with. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, and they get divine shield. Like it's it's not it's not the greatest thing. There's nothing buffing those though, so it's not really doing much in standard. Um, but four for three five is okay. Um, I just I, he for me this is a this is barely a three. I don't see I don't think it sees play in standard. I think it sees um it, it doesn't see play in wild. It's great when you get it as a one-off, um, you know, just maybe you might have one Silverhand Recruit that it gives a plus one attack. I really almost want to give this, I'm actually going to drop this down. I'm going to rate this a two, actually. And the reason I'm rating it as a two is because there's, there's no support. This isn't odd, so it doesn't go in wild. And there's not a lot of support in, uh, right now at least, there's not a lot of support in standard for Silverhand Recruits, unfortunately. So it's just, I just don't see it working out right now. Um... Carousel Griffin, Divine Shield, Corrupt, gain plus three, plus three, and Taunt. That's pretty big. Uh, Paladin loves Taunt minions. That is no surprise. Um, this can now fit into a non-pure Paladin. But you got to play a six-cost car card, and this has to be in your hand. 5-5 um, five, five for Divine Shield is kind of... That's about the average stats you would ex expect. So it's not the best. Um, but when it gets corrupted is when it gets huge. So I think this is a fairly well-balanced card. I like it. I'm just going to go and give that a three mana or a three out of five. Uh, really good for uh, late game. Um, you know, we're, we're actually going to bump that to a four. <clears throat> because even if you play it five, five for Divine Shield, that's not the worst thing. That's probably more like the three out of five. But when you get this thing corrupted... You really boost its stats. Uh, a five mana eight eight with taunt and divine shield is pretty big. Not entirely hard to do. 
you can play. There's a lot of six cost stuff out there. Um, I don't think it fits in a pure paladin though. I don't think they have room to fit that. But overall, the card is really good. A uh, hammer of Naru, battle cry, summon a six six holy elemental with taunt. Uh, I mean, six cost six six elemental with taunt is what you would expect for six mana, right? That's uh, that's okay. But the fact that you get a three three uh, weapon with it, you know, that's not too shabby. Um, you get three attack. Uh, but is that really what Paladin needs right now? They are all a six six holy elemental with taunt is good. But it's not as good as the Griffin. It's not as good as the um, the High Exart Ural, however you say their name. Um, it's, it's not as good as that. This is maybe something that you get off of, uh, again, a, a, a random effect, a card generation. I don't think this is something you put in your deck. Because uh, if you're going for a taunt, if you're going for a pure taunt build... Maybe, because you could play Hammer, and then you could play Griffin afterwards, because you most likely, because this will corrupt that card. I just don't see why you're playing a Taunt um, Paladin when Liberum Paladin has the Taunts for cheaper, and it heals. I just don't, I just don't see this, I mean, this is a good, it, this is a card that sucks for you when your opponent plays it, because they get it off of a random generation, and it's late in the game, but this isn't something you want in your hand, right? Um, uh, turn 6 is, is, a, is a hard turn to put that out and you only get a 6-6 like I said a lot of people can deal with that and then you're you have a 3-3 which isn't terrible but <clears throat> it's like a three and a half card for me but I'm gonna rate it as a three I don't think it's a I don't think it goes quite um it's not as strong as the uh, the griffin day at the fair summon three hand silver hand recruits um okay so three mana summon a one one a one one and a one one that's that's average that's actually like below average now power creep uh uh thinking um corrupt you get to summon five okay but if you've corrupted on four and you play this on five for three mana to get five i mean that's when you're playing this you're playing this on turn five or later it's it's not really that good it it to me it sucks <laughs> I'm, i it's not a card i want um to have in my hand because I, I don't want five one ones on the board um, I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to hit it with a balloon merchant, but even then, uh, even if you've after you've played, you're redeemed, right? They got divine shield. I mean, it's not the most threatening thing on the board at five. Uh, I, I just don't. Maybe this could combo well if you play the redeemed, play the day at the fair, and then you play the other minion in um, in standard that removes all divine shield and gets plus three plus three. Now that could be a combo that someone comes up with and starts playing. But is it, it takes a lot to set up, and is it really better than Liberum Paladin? It's it's not. Liberum Paladin is strong. You can get a not, you can heal for eight and get a eight, eight on board with Taunt and Divine Shield for like three mana. I mean, this isn't, um, this isn't the, uh, the hardest, it, it's just not the, the strongest combo to set up, and the other combos seem a little bit stronger for me. So I'm going to give that a two it's not garbage play it's it's almost a one for me in standard um most likely we'll see play uh, you know i don't even know if sees play in in wild honestly because wild are summoning um i mean they're summoning two you figure you're summoning two silver hand recruits for one welcome to the jungle right yeah i just don't i just don't think that that sees much play at all i'm giving it a two uh I, I just don't I just don't see that, that card doing really well. Um <clears throat> moving on to Priest. Alright, Priest. Let's see how many more we have to go here. Priest, insight, draw minion. Uh corrupt reduce its cost to two. This is this is good. Uh priest sucks at draw. Like if you look at if you go to standard priest right now and you type in draw and you look for cards, the only priest card you have is Master the Spell. This can specifically draw minion. And if you play it later, which you very well could, because um, it's not hard to play a three or more and stall for uh, Priest, uh, reduces cost by two. Awesome card. You're going to want to get this card off Renew. Uh, this is card I, I believe you're going to put in your deck because you're going to draw specific minions. Um, this is a really nice card. I think it's a really, really strong card, but it's not broken. Um, I don't think... I mean, maybe if you pull Kelt and you... Uh, or you, 
you have a big a big a big priest minion um uh deck which might be a thing in standard we're still debating on whether or not it's going to be good um for resurrect because priest doesn't have a lot of removal early game um this could draw obviously your big minions here um but you have to corrupt it it's it's a good card i i think that this card is a um i give this card a four out of five uh i it, it, it's it's borderline five out of five. I mean, it's good for what it does, but I don't think that um, priest. Uh, I, I don't think they have the. T they, there's no tools here to reduce the. Uh, there's no tools here to help early game, which is what priest hurts with right now. And the early game is going to get harder um, with what's coming up. All right, uh, the next one, the fairground fool is a 3-4-3 three, three corrupt gain for health. That's 3 for 4-7. So 3-4-3 three, three taunt is, eh, that's your standard stats. But you could corrupt and really boost this bad boy up. Um, I really like that. I think it's a solid card. Um, the problem is the corrupt cost at 4 mana. So Priest really hurts it around 4 mana. Um, because turns 1, 2, and 3... Face Hunter and those aggro decks are hitting hard. So you could put up a 3 for 4-3 and taunt. But then this can later trans... If you can hold off, you can get this to have that 4-7 health, which is really good. Really um, hurts those tempo games. So it's a really strong card. Um, um, to me, this is a 4. This is a 4 out of 5 card for Priest. <clears throat> uh, Gahoon, the Blood God. Draw 2 cards. They cost health instead of mana. Um, this one is yet to be determined because by the time you play an eight cost minion for a, uh, priest, <clears throat> which you could play it for six if you have the, um, the insight card, if you had, I'm going to guess, draw two cards, they cost health instead of mana. There are times where you do not want your, co your cards to cost health instead of mana. I mean, you pick up mass resurrection. Okay. You could play mass resurrection for nine and deal nine damage to yourself. But a lot of times you're playing Mass Resurrection because you're behind and you're trying to catch up, right? So you would have to play this card in conjunction with cards that heal you. So you're going to have to play it with Cartoot Defender like we saw on the stream. You have to play this card with maybe some Water Bearers or something that heals you because if you have... You, yes, you can play this card. It goes really well with the quest because the quest, a lot of times people aren't trying to deal damage to you, right? And so you, you want to heal up. But at the same time... What happens if you do Blood God and you draw two bombs? Now you just took 10 damage and, um, well, those cost health. So I guess those, those, those wouldn't count as the two cards you would draw. So that makes sense. You, you would take 10 damage, but again, um, you're drawing cards, which would you want to do? But a lot, if you're doing a big priest, you don't want to play Blood of Gahoon for nine mana uh, unless you want to play two of them, right? I, I don't particularly like this card. But there are some combo setups because if you can get Pull Kelt out and you can get um, like Malagos out, right? If you can get Malagos and then you could do some crazy stuff and deal damage to face uh, in wild for, uh, you know, um, you could play two Mind Blasts and you can end the game, right? You could just play Malagos, two Mind Blasts, end the game. So in, in standard though, mm, so I don't think the, you know, I didn't even check. I, don't, I haven't seen Mind Blast in forever. Does Priest even have a... Is Mind Blast still... Yeah, they took they took Mind Blast out. It has rotated. You don't have a um, Mind Blast anymore, which is huge. <laughs> but I would imagine that people are going to set this up with a... Uh, they're going to set this combo up with some kind of um, big mini in play. But you d the problem with Priest right now is healing. Priest has a major problem with healing... And if you heal up, uh, <clears throat> if you're playing this card on eight, chances are you're low on health and you don't want to play those cards. So I can see Cahoon drawing cards and then you don't you don't want to play them because you're going to die, right? Or you're going to be at one or two health. You're going to be really low. So I give this card a three out of five um, just because it's an eight cost draw two, even though Priest wants to draw... It's gonna in standard. This is in or in wild. This is more like a four, uh, four out of five. But right now, I'm gonna say that's a three out of five. Uh, Blood of Gahoon. 
At the end of your turn, summon a five-five copy of the minion in your deck. This is huge. This is a good. This is a good card. This is what priests need. Nine mana. Um, eight eight taunt is pretty good. But the big thing here is that it summons a copy. It doesn't summon the actual card. So you are going to see this card in wild in big priest, and you are going to hate it because it is going to summon five-five copies, which are going to be nasty because all big priests. Um, it basically this is a nine cost. Uh, put a taunt up, and then also play the uh shadow essence which was a six cost this is a big deal card this is a five this is definitely a five um rate star rated card it's gonna be hard to pull out but man when you pull this out especially in big priest it's gonna be nasty because of those copies so all priests has to do is put cop uh minions in their deck that has some sort of effect um and, and you know more taunts cartoon defenders anything it's gonna be big this is definitely the uh, card that priest wants to see for uh for resurrections um and then idol of your charge <clears throat> summon a 10 10 copy of the minion in your deck it cost again this is big this is this could hit this uh it could hit the blood of gahoon and then it can start summoning more this is basically shadow essence for two more mana on um on steroids it makes it a 10 10 so uh, Idol of your charge goes without saying that is uh, a big card. I'm gonna give it a. Uh, I'm hesitant. I, I want to give it a four out of five um, because it's an eight cost and it it summons a random copy. Whereas Blood of Cahoon actually gives you defensive materials and summons a copy. Um, this you'll have to be in the right deck, but I give it a four out of five. It could very well become a five out of five if Priest. The problem is Priest has no removal. Early game removal sucks for Priest right now. And Priest has a hard time healing up. It, the face damage is so strong. And it's only going to get stronger. Uh, it, it, it's going to be nice for Resurrect Priest. But Resurrect Priest is not going to do as well. I know it looks nasty in the stream. But that's because he's not facing a face hunter or a or a demon hunter that's slamming you in the face for so much damage. So, uh, 4 out of 5 for me. Uh, there's Mighty Bloodweaver after you cast a spell, you just cost a random card in your hand. This is huge because you're going to want to, um, at the same time, you want this for Big Priest, but you don't want your other things to summon these things because you want to be able to uh, play this. So I think this goes really well with, uh, with stuff like, um, Sethic and, um, where you can cast spells. Um, you can get a spell because after you cast a spell, the uh, Seth that could put a spell in your hand. And this can reduce it by one, right? So it can, you can chain a little more. A uh, really nice card. It's a it's a two five for three, which isn't a bad stat line. Um, this is a to me this is a, a fairly balanced um, minion at three. Palm reading. Discover a spell. Reduce the cost of spells in your hand by one. So think of it like renew. Remember, renew is a one cost. Discover a spell. But most people were using it for discover a spell. Um, this will actually discover, and then the discovered copy you get is going to be reduced by one. So that's important. That's pretty big. Um, so you could play Palm Reading, right? Get Renew, uh, ha or get a get a spell. This will be this will change a Renew in your hand to zero. So then you can play Renew after that and discover. So you can do all kinds of kind of crazy things here. Um, the discover a spell is huge. That this is what you're going to be needing to discover the removal that you need to be able to run the priest uh the resurrection priest um uh archetype but the palm reading might at three mana is it's, it's a lot to pay to do nothing this turn um so uh, i i think that's a, a really nice card i'm gonna give it a four out of five it's one of those cards priests need but it's just there's no removal here that's the problem auspicious spirit summon a random four cost minion corrupt summon a seven cost instead uh I, I hate this card. <laughs> four, okay, four cost, random four cost minions. So think back when um, Warrior had the four cost portal, you know, gain four armor, summon a random, I, I don't know, I think it might have been a four cost or three cost. N never saw play. Garbage. If you play this for four mana, you're, you're really hurting yourself because the last thing Priest wants are random minions. Priest does not want random minions. And a four cost random minion for four is terrible. You need to be able to control, if you're playing priest, what minions you're putting on board because it's going to resurrect. So this goes against resurrection and then it's random. So there's nothing about this card that screams that this is what priest wants to do. Even if you corrupt it and you get to seven. So let's look at these seven cost minions, right? 
Um, <clears throat> and they didn't give Priest a seven cost minion, which is kind of crazy. So the seven cost minions that you can get with Priest in standard are the dragon, obviously. But let's let's look at all minions that are seven cost. So Priestess of Fury, that's a good hit. Uh, Sociologist uh, is terrible. Ancient of Lore is terrible. Ancient of War is terrible. Um, Guru, which, well, that's not a bad one to hit, but, I mean, it's just this 510 taunt. You're not going to get any treants out of it. The, uh, the taunt with Reborn is not a bad hit. Um, the Hydra, uh, again, you're going to be filling up your hand with some... Um, with an 8-cost minion after you attack with it, because you'll attack right away. Not a bad hit, but again, uh, you're starting to add that random random effect stuff in there, and that's not what you want to do as Priest. Um, the the Owl is a terrible hit. Uh, the um, Windrunner is a bad hit. Bran is a bad hit. The Dark Moon Tonk would be a decent hit. This is ultimately one of the cards you would want to hit, because the Resurrection potential is very good. Um, Antonidas could be a good hit. Dragoncaster, terrible the Avalanche would be a bad hit. Um, the Kings would be a bad hit. The Crusader would be an average. Liadrin uh, uh, would be a bad hit for you. Skeletal Dragon um, would be a decent hit. Both of these, actually, the other uh, Vagrant is not a, a bad hit at all. You would like to hit that. The Hagatha. But if you're starting to see the theme here, um, there's a lot of 7-cost minions that are bad. Like, you don't want to hit. Like, they're either bad or average. And... Um, there's just there's too many bad cards. You probably have a fifty percent chance. I think I, what I detected, fifty percent chance of hitting a bad card. This card, I'm telling you, is trash. Even if you get it um, in your hand and you corrupt it, or you get it from a discover effect and you corrupt it, you're not gonna. You're almost not gonna want to play this card. This is this is gonna be a terrible card for you. It's it's not. It's gonna whiff a lot. This, to me, is that one. It's a one. This is a one. You do not want to play this card when you get it. Um, you don't want to discover it. I can't imagine anybody running this. This is the worst card, or at least one of the worst cards in the whole expansion, and it's given to Priest, and Priest has nothing want to do with this spell. Um, you're not going to see that at all. That's it. it I'm, I, have, uh, so I have almost 3,000 games won as Priest, and this is not what i want to see uh, you don't want to discover this <laughs> it's just, there's too many bad you, you don't want to mess up your resurrection pool and you, I, it's just a bad spell overall there's very few i mean you could you could high roll with it but you're gonna low roll and you're gonna and roll more times than you're gonna high roll uh the nameless one uh four cost choose a minion become a four four copy of it and then silence it now a lot of people don't understand how this card works um choose a minion so you're gonna choose a minion let's say that you are going to choose a uh let's say you choose um a dragon like a uh a, a, um Ysera. let's say you choose Ysera. so you become a 4-4 Ysera. and then you're going to silence it and what it means by it is you're going to silence the minion the other uh, Ysera that you targeted so the minion that you choose is the minion and you're going to silence so this is a 4-4-4 four, four, four with silence attached to it which is not good, so think of Spellbreaker. Four, four, three for uh, for a silence. But you're going to become a copy of it, which is the big part. That's that faceless corruptor kind of part. Um, so hear me out. Let's say I pick a, I pick a Ysera, right? And I become a 4-4 four, four copy of it. And then I'm now a 4-4 four, four Ysera, and I get a card at the end of my hand. Now, what I can do is I can now silence my Nameless One, and now my Nameless One will be a 4-12. So... No matter what, the Nameless One, just because you become a copy, is good. I think you're going to see this card in every Priest deck. I think this is a 5-5 five, five card. Um, priest is hurting at that 4 mana. If you look at that 4 mana slot, what Priest gets is... T it, there's not a lot of good 4 uh, mana minions. Um, and the Nameless One fills that slot. And it has a Silence attached to it, which is huge. Because um, normally Priest would have to run Master Spell, which it takes up a deck slot. It's a draw. Um, and not a lot of people run it. And then the zero cost silence, not a, people, a lot of people are running that. This gives you minion on board with the silence and also becomes a cut. So imagine hitting a rattle gore with this. This is a, this is a control uh, player's dream card, really, for uh, against other control players. So you're going to be really good. And then it's also going to be good for early board. So if you're playing Voracious Reader, let's say a um, 
the hunter is playing voracious reader and then you have a 4-4. Four, four. You could silence that, right? Before you couldn't silence it without paying four mana for a do-nothing other than silence or a zero cost, which you weren't running anyway. Um, so you could silence that reader, stop them from drawing. You become a 4-4 four, four copy of it and now you can draw. So there's, this has a lot of play that the Nameless One could do. To me, the Nameless One is one of the best priest cards that we get this expansion. That is a 5-5 five, five card. Make no doubt about it. Fortune Teller. Uh, five cost three three taunt battle cry gain plus one plus one for each spell in your hand let's say on average you have two spells in your hand this is a five five taunt so uh, so what you in order to uh, uh, average other uh, class cards would be a five uh, mana um, six six with taunt would be like an average class card because it's better than a normal uh, neutral minion but in order to get that, you would have to ha you have to have three spells in your hand. If you have three spells in your hand, and you're sitting at f and you're playing a card for five mana, those spells in your hand, you would have had to have generated them, or you would have done nothing with them. You would have been playing minions the whole time, which mi a priest is not playing minions early game. We're playing very few early game minions. They're playing spells to penance because I need to kill the face stalker. So I'm using my spells to to survive enough to get to five mana. Five mana, th this, I mean, on average, you're probably going to have, we'll say, two spells in your hand when you have this card. Let's say you have four spells in your hand, which th that's, that's crazy, right? Uh, uh, Priest has four spells in your hand. This is still a five mana, seven, seven taunt, which is, uh, that's pretty good, right? Five mana. But what have you been doing for the first four mana? That's my problem with this card, is I, I dislike this card. I think this is... You know, you'll it'll see some play, but I don't think you put it in your deck because a five, you could let's say you put a five mana um, taunt. The reason you're putting a taunt up is because you're taking all this face damage. You need to put something up to block all this garbage from. Um, you're gonna put this up, and it, it's gonna be destroyed or silenced. You know, this is so susceptible to so many things. This is not going to see play. I don't see people putting this in their deck. And it's not going to go into a Resurrect deck because you don't want this Resurrected. This is a bad card for Priest. I was really disappointed to see this. It's not a survival tool. Um, you, If you're surviving, if you want health, you might as well just go ahead and play Infiltrator. Because at least you're going to get the 6 health. Because the 3 attack is negligible. You're not using it for the attack. You're using it for survival. You're going to get the 6 health already on the Infiltrator. And you're going to destroy a minion. This guy does not see play, in my opinion. This is like a one and a half card, but um, I, I I very much dislike the card. Um, I, I I'm gonna give this. A, I want to say one and a half, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be generous and say two because it's not as bad as the auspicious spirits, but it's still terrible. It's not a card you want to resurrect, and they're trying to push the resurrection thing. It, you just don't run this minion. You you honestly don't because if you run this minion, um, I mean maybe your Highlander, maybe a Highlander runs it, and and and, and you discover, uh, see even Galakrond is giving you minions and not spells, and Priest doesn't have um, the spell generation. You know they could get it from Spellkin. You know get those little one cost cards, but even a, even if you play this as a five mana six six taunt, that's just that's not good enough for Priest now. Um, you have to have four spells in hand, and if you have four spells in hand, like I said, what are you doing? Um, so I just I just dislike the card. I'll give it a two because it might go into a Highlander deck. I just I highly doubt it. Uh, that's just my professional opinion. Um, Rogue, I think Rogue made out like bandits. Um, Rogue is <laughs> right, uh, uh, pun intended. Rogue uh, is going to have so much fun this expansion. I can't wait to play my Rogue. Um, there's just a lot of stuff uh, that's going to be coming into um, into play here that's going to change a lot of the stuff that Rogue does. So let's get right to it. Foxy, Fraud, Battlecry. Your next combo card this turn costs two less. Um, <clears throat> this is huge. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is a fr it's a free minion, and it combos. So you could play this in combo. This is the huge... This is... This is what every rogue has been wanting. I guarantee you every rogue is running this in every deck that has any kind of combo card. Five out of five card. Beautifully designed card. Rogue is going to be playing lots of card. Edwin's going to get a lot of play now. Um, that is a that is a five out of five card. Great, great card. Uh, Sweet Tooth Corrupt gains plus two attack and stealth. Uh, this is going to be really good in aggro rogue. Aggro stealth rogue if that comes back. Not sure yet. 
Um, but you have to corrupt, so you have to play a three cost before you can play this. But I can see someone playing a three cost and playing two Sweet Tooths, right, for two. So you get a two mana and a two mana. That's a five two stealth. That's a lot of damage. Really good card, really strong. Um, I just don't know if Secret Rogue is going to become a thing uh, or not. Um, and it's not a combo card, so you can't discount it really. So I'm gonna give this. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a. Three out of five. I want to give it a four, but I'm going to stick with three out of five um, just because I don't think, I don't know how well Stealth Rogue is going to be. We will see. And the Corrupt is, uh, you got to wait. And Stealth Rogue usually wants to throw things out and come at you right away. But, it, you know, you play something big and you draw this, and then this is this is a nice 5 2. So, um, uh, I, I, I want to give it four, but I'm, I'm just going to keep it at three for now. <clears throat> Swindle, draw a spell, combo, and a minion. Huge. Uh, this is, I mean, this goes so well with the combo stuff that Rogue does with the, the, um, the, uh, the Foxy Fraud. You can play Foxy Fraud, play Foxy Fraud, uh, Foxy Fraud, play Swindle, and you draw two, for two mana, you can put a 3-2, draw a spell, and a mini. It's huge. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's, Swindle's like the perfect combo card. Every, every Rogue is, is gonna be in love with this card. This goes into every single Rogue deck. This is a five out of five card. Make no doubt about it. This is a beautiful card. Um, Cloak of Shadows, give your hero, hero stealth for one turn. So my thought in trying to create some meme decks is can you get this spell infinitely? Um, is there a way to set this up to where you can get this with like Educated Elec and you just keep on, right? You just play this, play, play Educated Elec, play this. They can't hit you, so they have to hit your Elec. And then your Elec dies and you get this but you you know you want to want to gang up or do something on your elec too um, i don't know but this is pretty good this is basically uh basically evasion or not evasion but um but like an like a, a mini ice block but you control it um so if you feel like man i need one more turn to survive i'm gonna play this it feels a lot like timeout for paladin but not as strong um because at least with timeout paladin you didn't take any damage for two so it's like a weaker timeout in a sense, but that's big for Rogue because Rogue has always struggled. Uh, you know, I just need one more turn, one more turn. I, this combo, I'm so close to putting it together. So I like that card. I think the card is very uh, beautifully put together. I think it's a, a nice. Um, it, it's amazing we don't have a give your hero stealth. It's been this long for Rogue, right? That's like a core thing of Rogue, um, other than their Death Knight. So I give this a th this card a three. I think it's a really well balanced card. It could find some out of hand plays where you can go infinite stealth. I, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but that's possible. But I like the two, I like the uh, the the three cost version of it right now. Shadow clone secret after a minion attacks your hero, summon a copy of it with stealth. Um, I love it. It's it's like a uh, it's kind of like a um, what you would call it <clears throat> a mirror entity, but uh, it's whoever attacks. So whatever you hit me with, I'm going to hit you with it back, right? So it's kind of like an opposite um, uh, opposite uh, effect of Mirror Entity. Mirror Entity is three. Saw some play. Um, but you can control this, right? Because Mirror Entity, at least I couldn't control. I play Mirror Entity, and I'm at the mercy of whatever you play. If I play Shadow Clone, and you got a big minion on board, and you didn't put anything else up, I'm playing Shadow Clone. Because the next minion you play means you can't attack me with that minion that you had on board or else you suffer, you know, this. So Shadow Clone, really good. I really, really, really like this card. Uh, it's going to fit really well into my um, into my Secret Rogue. This is a 4 out of 5 card. Uh, very well designed. We definitely were waiting for a card like that. Uh, Tenwu of the Red Smoke. Battlecry, return friendly minion to your hand. It costs 1 this turn. Uh, this is huge. And I'll tell you why this is huge. This goes, uh, think about Togwaggle. You can put, you can play Togwaggle, play this, Togwaggle's back in your hand. Kronks, play Kronks, play this. This is a very, very big, I know people are like, oh, Shadow Step's better. But Shadow Step is zero and only reduces it to two. This reduces your big minions back to one. So you can play those eight cost minions, you know, eight cost and below, and put them back, that had a nice battle cry effect, and put them back in your hand for one. Um, you do give up the board, but chances are stuff like that, like your Togwaggle, you're not putting it for the board effect. You're putting it for that draw three. Big minion. I love this minion. Uh, to me, this is a three, um, this is a, 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 a five star minion. I love it. I don't know what everybody else is giving it, but for me, I absolutely love that minion. That goes into my Kronk's, um, rogue type decks. 
Next one, Malevolent Strike, uh, Destroy Minion, cost one for each, cost one less for each card in your deck that didn't start there. Um, obviously, this is going to, into a Cthulhu deck, and this is going to cost one uh, every single time, um, <clears throat> unless you draw your Cthulhu cards. But even then, you got a lot of stuff to shuffle with Rogue. Even if this is a three mana, this is still good as a three mana because your uh, Coerce was a three mana, but you had to combo it. Uh, this is a really, really, really nice card. It's going to cause a lot of problems, but I think uh, for a lot of people, because um, Rogue is going to be sapping and destroying minions and doing all kinds of stuff, and it's going to be hard to build a board. Especially when you have to play a 9 cost minion as Priest and the Rogue just destroys it for 1. Huge swing. This is a 4 out of 5 card. Um, possibly even 5 out of 5 depending on how good Cthulhu is. Battlecry, discover a card in your deck and draw all copies of it. Um, <clears throat> I, I like how you can discover the card in your deck and draw specifically that card. That's really good. That's like a tutor. Um, however, let's, uh, let's, let's think for a second. In, in Wild... Bomb Warrior. Okay, if you can make your hero immune, you could do this. Draw the bomb and draw all those bombs, right? And just go ahead and clear out all your bombs. Um, that's pretty. That's that's a nice little thing to do in Wild. But I do like the uh, the fact that you can get you can play this on six and you can pull out the card that you're waiting for. Maybe you couldn't get Pull Kelt, right? So you get Pull Kelt and you and you you get that. Um, but it also for shuffle, so Pogo Hopper. I know a lot of people are thinking Pogo Hopper. I, I don't think Pogo Hopper is going to be a thing just because Zilliax isn't in the meta anymore. And Pogo Hopper was, I don't even know if Pogo Hopper is even in the meta anymore. To be honest with you, you don't ever see it. I don't think it is. But this could be like a wild thing. Um, so Pogo Hopper in wild, you know, that could be really good, super good. But at the same time, um, the other uh, minion, uh, um, uh, the Whisker Minion Legendary. I can't think of it right now. Maybe someone can uh, and type it up. <clears throat> uh, where you shuffle in a card and you get all copies right away. Tasnos, Whiskers, Whiskers, something like that. Um, that didn't even work out. So I don't think this will work out too well. But I like this as a card. Like if you shuffle in a whole bunch of Kronks. And then you can play her and grab all those Kronks next turn. It's a good way to get that. Um, I think it's a decent card. Very well designed card. I give that a 3 out of 5 Legendary um, <clears throat> also goes really well, obviously, with Ticketmaster. Shuffle three tickets into your deck uh, when drawn. Uh, so, so just like the uh, the um, Strider that we saw before that was, I think, four cost, um, this will see, I'm sure, some play. Uh, does it give me the Plush Bear here? Right here. Plush Bear is just a 3-3. Three, three. It's not too shabby. It, the, the beautiful thing here is it's a 3-4-3, three, three, right? And it has the Death Rattle effect. So I, I like the Ticketmaster. I think that's a really good. I think that's a really nice card. I um I I, I want to give that a four, um just because I think it'll see more play with Stowaway. I think Stowaway works really well with that <clears throat> on the next turn. So you could play this and then Stowaway. You could uh you could coin Stowaway and grab those cards and have a nice little board. Uh, <clears throat> Prize Plunder. Combo deal one damage to a minion for each other card you've played this turn. Um. It's not too bad. One cost two one is good, but obviously you're gonna to want to play this at least on turn two, so it's at least some uh, some <clears throat> help. I believe this is gonna go really well with uh, uh, aggro stealth rogue, um, <clears throat> and it's targeted to a minion. I don't think it's too powerful. I think it is a solid three um, for combo plays. All right, let's get down to the shaman. All right. Shaman Revolve. I love this card. This is beautiful. Another transformation effect. This is going to wreck uh, as if Shaman with their Hex and their Devolving Missiles and then in Wild Devolve and all this stuff didn't already hurt stuff like Priest and those other Revolve is the spell. You always put this in your deck. This is, the, this is like Devolve back in the day except Revolve. It costs one less. And here's where Revolve gets really good. Revolve. So remember Desert Hair. You play Desert Hair. You get uh, two. You could play it on your own minions. You don't even have to evolve your minions. You can revolve. And there's stuff that does that because the Pitmaster is going to summon duelists. Re so, you, so the Pitmaster's three. He summons some duelists, and the duelists um, are. Oh, the Pitmaster here. We're going to go to the Pitmaster. Uh, the duelists. I believe they are two cost minions, but they you you can transfer all these over and get those into different three costs so the pit master could be better give me a second
<clears throat> All right, sorry, had a little telemarketer call there. So Revolve, I think, is a perfect card. Uh, five five card, very well designed. It'll it'll get some complaints, I'm sure, because it'll transform your your um, board into better costs. So like, it'll change Pitmasters into a, something better than a one two, and then it'll also uh, wreck the enemy so like you know braggarts and stuff like that obviously this is going to be help shaman keep liberum paladin in check and also is, can disrupt a lot of the early game that uh that um hunter brings especially with their one one uh the beast that's a one cost summons a mini uh, a copy and it's a three three you can revolve all that it's just a very very nice nice card to have in and here's the big thing you're going to get this from one maker you're going to get this from spellkin do I dare say Shaman moves up the ladder in meta? We will see. That's a good card. They definitely needed that. Um, cage match custodian. Draw a weapon. Uh, beautiful elemental. The two. I love those two cost. Uh, two, two elementals that specifically uh, um, draw things. Um, there's really not much to say here. Targeted draw is always good. That is a four out of five um, minion. The Pitmaster. Um, summon a 3-2 duelist, so right away you get 3 mana, you get a 4-4 four, four for 3 mana, um, which is good, but the corrupt version is you summon 2, which is huge, this is good, this is a 4, this is a 4, uh, to me this is a 4 cost, or a 4 star rated card, um, because it pairs so well with like Revolve and all these other things, so I, I can't, I don't know if the duelists are 3, are they 3, I hope they have 3 mana minions, because you want to hit that with the Revolve. Um, but I didn't see the duelist in here, so I can't really check. I know someone else has a duel. Where are they at? Uh, right here. Some of the, so let's see. Pavilion duels. Oh, they're two. They're going to be two mana. <clears throat> so you could change it to two. So I, I still, I like this card. I think this is a solid, uh, four, um, four star card. Storm strike, deal three damage to a minion, give your hero plus three attack this turn. Uh, another, this is another solid four, um, star card for shaman especially if you're going with weapons three damage so you figure um lightning bolt was one and um give your a uh, hero or a friendly minion three attack is a two so it's two cards combined into one but without the overload that's beautiful that's what you want to see in a card to help shaman uh whack a null hammer uh after your attack set. So the big thing here is this is a three. It's only three costs. It's not a four cost. A three cost, three, two. Buffs your guys. Um, um, I think it's a really well designed card. Give your friendly a random uh, friendly minion plus one, plus one. <clears throat> so you can uh, you can do a lot of uh, shenanigans with that. Um, I'm going to give that card. I think it's more like a three and a half. But I'm going to give it a four star rating. On your turn, your hero has plus two attack wind fury. So you don't even have to have a weapon in... in you can do four damage with this to face. Um, you you know, this gives you plus two attack. So four damage. You don't even have to have a weapon in, uh, up and running. So it's an immediate four damage to whatever you want. You can take out two things. So it's kind of like removal. And then it can get really nasty if you have a weapon. Uh, this is a five-star card without a doubt. Um, I think that's a, a very, very powerful card. A lot of people will be running that, especially Shaman. They do a lot of damage to face. <clears throat> All right, next card we have is Magic Finn. Magic Finn, after a friendly Murloc dies, add a random legendary minion to your hand. I don't know if that really helps. I mean, Murlocs don't want... I mean, it's it's nice to hit this Murloc, um, but you, your minion has to die. If it was if it was after you summon a Murloc at a random legendary minion, then we might be talking something different, but it's after a friendly Murloc dies, so he has to not die, and then you get a legendary in your hand, which you may or may not use. So it could help you push... Towards the end, um, this isn't really a card that you're going to be, um, that you, I don't think you're going to be running this specifically in a Murloc deck. I could be wrong, but I think this is more like you get off of a, off, off of Murloc Discovery or, or Murloc Random Generation because, um, and, and you want to do it later game. So I don't think you play this on three. It's possible I could be wrong. Uh, the Murlocs are always hard to predict because they come out swinging and, um, but they need a lot more support, and there's really no Murloc support that came. Um, I'm going to give the card a 2 out of 5. I just don't see it uh, doing much to the meta. You, you, you have to hope for a high roll, um, and Murlocs um, generally aren't doing that. They're just trying to go face and smash you. 
uh, Deathmatch Pavilion, summon a 3-2 Duelist. If your hero attacked this turn, summon another. So, really good card. This is a 4 out of 5 star card, I believe, because a 3-2 Duelist is good. Um, if you attack, you obviously get to summon another. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna bump this down to a three because you do need to have a weapon, and you do and, and there's only a, you know a few cards that give you a weapon, and usually you don't want to run those cards. But two mana for two three twos is actually really good. I, you know I'm gonna keep it at a four. I'm gonna keep it at a four because I believe that that two mana for two three twos. Um, is is a, a cheap price to pay after you've already attacked and hit so you're gonna attack and hit minions clear some of that board and then put up a little good board for yourself those are always good swing plays that definitely deserves a four grand totem eyesore i like that eyesore he's like an eyesore that's that's pretty good <laughs> at the end of your turn give plus one plus one to all other totems in your hand deck and battlefield first of all you don't have a lot of totems in your deck, right? You just got those most of the time you're summoning totems, but you do have some. There's some totems in your deck. The battlefield one is the big one because you play and you get immediate effect. Totem Shaman is already pretty strong. Uh, this is going to give it a little more strength, but does it give it enough strength to help because of all the other garbage that's going on? All the face hunter, demon hunter, um, all these aggro things that come out. Warlock's going to have some aggro stuff. There's a whole lot of aggro that comes out. Can the totems keep up with it? Um, I, I don't know, but I love the card. I think this good. Obviously, you put this into any to Totem Shaman that you're playing, but can Totem Shaman really do anything? I don't know if they can keep up. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. The card itself is really good, but you have to build a deck specifically around it. Dunk Tank. Deal 4 damage. Corrupt. Then deal 2 damage to all enemy e minions. Okay, so four for deal 4 for 4 is isn't bad that's 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 kind of it's 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 a little bad it's just not as good as it could be but the deal two damage to all me it's like a mini earthquake um so earthquake was seven and two um right no it was five and two so seven overall and this is four and two and you only need to play a five cost so i think this replaces a lot of the uh, earthquakes um because you can play this a little bit early you um uh, they're big may a big uh shaman um, is a thing right now. Um, a lot of people are playing that, and it's working out really well, especially in Wild. Um, a lot of people are starting to go to that style. That will definitely fit into that deck, and it also kills Death Rattles. It's pretty huge because you figure this hits those Cartoot Defenders for, that have four uh, defense and then kills them off outright. That's pretty big uh, that it hits those, um, and also Reborn Minions. So I like that card. I give Dunk Tank a five. I really like that card in Shaman. I think it's what they needed. Um, all right, we're down to Warlock. I think I'm going to be able to finish up Warlock and Warrior, and then I'll head out and I'll have to do the neutrals uh, <clears throat> in a different... Okay, I said Warlock, and it didn't... <laughs> These aren't Warlock cards. There we are. There's our Warlock cards. All right. Um, all right. Warlock cards. A Midway Maniac. Taunt. 1-5. So we've seen a 1-5 before. The mech, the neutral mech, was a 1-5 for 2. And it saw almost no play. Even in mech decks, it very... Sometimes they put it up in a mech deck so that things could magnetize to it before it died. This has Taunt, which gives a little better. But it's still, like... It, this is going to be in aggro decks for sure. Um, but the fact that it has a demon and it's Taunt... That's good. I believe this uh, is a, is a well-balanced card. I know it's crazy because before you could have a 1-5 um, for 2 was crazy. I mean, even Priest got a 1 cost 1-4 one and it saw no play, right? Nobody played that. Um, I just think that this is going to see a little bit more play. I, I do I, – I'm hesitant to give it a uh, – right in between a 2 and a 3 for me. Um I'm going to give it a 2 just because based off of what we've seen before, those those 1, 5, I mean, it's going to be nice when it gets buffed up. Obviously, it'll be a 2, 6, which is nice, but I'm still going to give it a 2. It's going to be played, but only in aggro. You're not going to play this anywhere else, and um, it'll be really well, really good for aggro, but 1, 5s, 2 cost 1, 4, or 1 cost 1, 4 didn't work for Priest. Will a two five a two cost one five with taunt work for uh, warlock? Yeah, just a little better, but not by much. 
free admission. Draw two minions. If they're both demons, reduce their cost by two. That's huge because you figure that the uh, the three cost spell that draws two demons, it just draws two demons. That's it. Well, now if your whole deck is nothing but minions or demons, you're drawing two demons and you're reducing them by two. Um, pretty big pickup. I think aggro demon hunter will become a thing. Obviously, this free mission goes really well with the Midway Maniac so that he could be a zero. So the Midway Maniac, we might need to bump up to a three. I, I'm going to keep it at two for now, though, because I think there's other demons that you could put in that are a lot more nastier. Because um, you're you're not usually wanting to taunt as a Warlock. You're wanting to go face, and so the, the imps are a lot better. Um, I really like free admission. I think that's a solid card. I give that a three out of five. Um, very well designed card. Minari Mosher. Give a friendly demon plus three attack and lifesteal this turn. What I dislike about this is that it's only lifesteal this turn. So you have to use it when you're doing a big damage. And is demon... Are, are demons um, having to deal lifesteal this turn? Well, it could because now the aggro demon hunters can... That counts as a uh, as a as an activator for the flesh giant to to heal up and and change your uh, and change your health that turn. Uh, so if you let's say that you um, you hero power and then you draw this guy and then you play this guy and you hit, um, you know you have a demon on board and it hits. You, you're it's changed twice in one turn. So your flesh giant you know has been reduced twice. Um, so this is a nice card. I dislike how it's just lifesteal this turn. I feel like it should be, I'd like this if it was give a demon, a friendly demon plus two attack and lifesteal and just keep it at that. But it's, it's this turn. So you get one little activation up, but you have to have a demon on board. Um, I give this guy a, uh, a three. Um, he, he'll, it'll help his little demons like this. So obviously it lines up really well for midway maniac to, to be a four damage minion with lifesteal but after that it's spent it's done its damage and it's done and it's just a three four <clears throat> ring matron uh summon two three two imps this is uh the new taunt i wish it was reversed where it was a four six and so it, it could stay up a little more but i think it wants to be a six four because it wants to die and it wants to do damage and that's why he's a big old fat nasty ring matron <laughs> so I, I like this card really six mana might be uh, a little hefty to pay but you can discount that to four. The fact that it gives you two uh, imps, though, is pretty huge. So that you, you kill him and out pops two more little imps out of his fat little belly. That is pretty cool. I like that. That is a four out of five for me. Cascading Disaster. Destroy random enemy minion for four. That's not really that good. Kind of sucks. Destroy two. We're looking a lot better. Corrupt again. Destroy three. That's huge. But that's going to take... You're going to have to play a five, six. You're going to play this on seven mana... Uh, on your seven mana turn to destroy three minions and you might already be behind the curve it's, it, it's not good for aggro this is going to uh, be what you want to play in a control warlock this will see uh, this will see play um, I imagine in in bigger warlock decks not aggro decks obviously um, it's just it's there's too much mana I mean it could but destroying three but they're random enemy minions so you're not going to be hurting aggro with this. You're going to have to. This is going to be focused specifically on the uh, on the on the bigger minions, uh, the bigger minion decks. But it goes really well in the Reno Warlock and Wild. Um, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Uh, I think it's really it, it's balanced because it sucks in the beginning. It gets it's pretty decent for uh for four because you figure uh hunter gets a three mana destroy a random one so you pay one more mana and then the other one you pay one more mana again for another minion and then finally you, you get after you corrupt it twice so you have to, you have to invest in this card obviously this is a card that sucks if you draw it like late game you've already played all your big stuff it's kind of a do nothing um one random minion but <clears throat> could be good in, in keeping uh helping curb those big late game uh paladins cards um, Takatis, uh, remove, Battlecry, remove your top five cards from your deck. Um, corrupt your opponent's deck instead. Okay, um, that's not too shabby. That's, uh, obviously it's not something you want to play until after you corrupt it. So you ha you're going to play that, you're going to play seven cards, you're going to have to play this on eight mana. Um, remove five cards, um, from your opponent's deck. So, <clears throat> that's, um, in today's meta, you, I mean, by, by the time you get to that late game, 
you're, you're beating combo pieces is what you're aiming, but you're not doing anything. You're going to suffer for aggro. So you have to have a good deck um, control deck and control warlock. There's really not as it's not a really a thing right now. Um, and I, I don't know if it's going to help out. Maybe if there's a, a heavy aggro with Takata, I just, I just don't see that seeing much play in standard. However, in wild, this is a beautiful card. There's a lot of combo decks, OTK decks in wild that this helps disrupt and helps you win those matches that you would normally lose. Shutterwalk, for example, if you're playing Reno Warlock, Shutterwalk tends to hurt pretty bad. You don't see it a lot, but the card is pretty strong in wild. Um, not a lot, but I'm rating specifically for standard. So for me, this is, it's like a two and a half. I'm going to say three for now because I, I don't think, um, control warlock is going to be a thing, but if the control of warlock is, this obviously be, is really good, but it's, it's going to be stuck at a three for me. Um, <clears throat> but it's definitely a, a five card, a five star in wild for me. <clears throat> Deck of Chaos, swap the cost and attack of all minions in your deck. Again, you got to build a big a big Warlock. This could be an OTK with Malagos. Malagos will now be a 4 cost, 9, 12. Uh, Jaraxxus would be a 3 cost, um, uh, 9, 15. That's pretty major, but again, um, can Warlock get a meta deck that that runs big minions and survives and i just don't see it i don't see it happening um this is obviously you could, you could pair it up with some stuff like the midway maniac so now the midway maniac is a one two five so you can start off with some taunts and some small stuff and later on you know uh change all those to where they're a little bit better in the end uh the deck of chaos i i, I think someone's gonna find something that's broken with it and find some kind of otk combo that's crazy i give it a four out of five for right now uh, it's just gonna be hard to pull off fire breather deal uh battle cry deal two damage to all minions except demons um that is a a, a decent card it's very much like the uh, demon wrath where you did like two damage to everything except for demons and that was three so this is tied to a four four three this is the aggro that um, that Warlock's going to be helped deal with. However, a lot of the aggro comes from Demon Hunter, and Demon Hunter has demons. So uh, it's it's a good card. Um, it's just not as strong when you compare it to stuff, other stuff like uh, like the um, man. I can't think of the the, the dragon for priest that did. Uh, <clears throat> Four, it was a four mana three three to all if you're holding a dragon uh to all enemy minions that that was pretty good uh this is i think this is a three out of five card it's definitely something a lot of warlocks are going to want to run um to help beat off aggro especially like the beast aggro but again the beasts are going to be bigger they're not if there's going to be a beast deck they're not going to be two minions they're, this should be three damage i think to all minions but that's just the way I'm thinking. Uh, so if it was three damage, I'd give it a four. But right now at two, it's going to sit at a one or a, two, uh, or a three out of five for me. Discard your lowest cost card. Give your minions plus one. Obviously, really, really good card for uh, for aggro. Um, I, I'm going to give this a three. It's, it's, it's a fairly strong card, but it's only going to see play an aggro. Um... And your lowest cost card is generally going to be, you know, your aggro cards too. You, you know, do you really want to get rid of your flame imp so that you can uh, give everyone else plus one, plus one? Maybe if that what gets gets you lethal. Um, I think that's fairly balanced uh, card to give your minions plus one, plus one for. Three mana, battle cry, destroy mana, crystal for both players. I uh, don't really see where that help. I mean, obviously, this is going to go into an aggro deck. It's going to be very annoying to put into an aggro deck, uh, or if you're playing against an aggro deck. I think it sees play there. I'm kind of... I don't understand why it doesn't have the demon, because that would be a nice little tag. So because it doesn't have the demon, I don't like how you can't draw it specifically with the free admission and then make that a one. <clears throat> However, that's a decent card. I give that a three. It basically... Uh, is a nice well-rounded minion um, but doesn't put any uh, it puts strain on the other control decks so i think warlock is going to have really strong zoo um and that's why these bigger cards are rated so low i don't think they're going to have a big uh 
a big minion deck that's gonna work. There's gonna be a strong, strong zoo, and if you beat out that zoo, just like always, you pretty much end it. So probably Galakrond Zoo Warlock will be a thing. All right, and our last one uh, here is Warrior. <clears throat> Warrior stage dive. Uh, draw a rush minion. Corrupt. Give it plus one, plus two. Huge. This is this is a this is a. I don't see why you don't run this card. Um, it's specific draw. It's targeted draw, and it's so easy to get above a one uh, a one mana. You're gonna get um, you just you play something on two, and then you play this to draw your rush. And there's a lot of good rush minions you can you can grab with this, and you're getting plus two, plus one. So. Um, warrior targeted draw has always been good. The one mana draw, you know, um, draw rush minion from your deck. That was a one, two saw play all the time. It's such a good minion. Um, this gives that rush minion and draws it <clears throat> plus two plus one. Um, it's not too overpowered, but it's really strong. I like it. That's like a four and a half star rated card for me, but I'm going to card. I'm going to give it four because I think this sees play. I think it sees play honestly in all, on all decks. This could easily be rated a five because it's just, it's of how often you're going to see it. Um, so a perfect example, the, uh, if you, if you need to draw, you're going against a, uh, an aggro heavy deck, <clears throat> the, the rush plus draw the rush. You could draw your bumper car. The bumper car has rush. It has death rattle. This is a, a generator plus rush. Great card. I think you see this in a lot of decks. Um, it's removal. It's minion. It's got all kinds of stuff. It's a mech. I like it. That is a four, a four star rated card as well. Minefield. A deal five damage randomly split among all minions. So before you'd had to play uh, five mana for a three four mech that did five damage um, along all non mechs. This is good um, because minefield can be um, it can go in uh, with um, destroy all damage minions. Um, it, 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 it combos so well, especially if they just have a five mana min or five health minion. You just throw this out and it just it just gets rid of that. I like it. I think it's a really balanced card. I don't think it's too powerful. I give that card a three out of five, um, probably borderline four. Um, but if, if they have a lot of little if they have a lot of minions, obviously this is this does nothing for you. And it also hits yours. That's if it was all enemy minions, I'd give this a four, but it's all minions, so I give it a which, you know, obviously could be good if you if you're running your armor smiths too. So it goes really go well with the armor smiths. But again, it, it could kill your armor smith outright and then, you know, it's essentially just a, a two mana uh, gain four four kill your own minion and gain four armor. <clears throat> Stage hand. Give a, a random mini in your hand plus plus two plus one plus one. Uh, this is huge. Two a two, three two, which is good, and it boosts and gives some in your hand uh, a plus one plus one. I, it's a three star um, for me. It's a, a a decent effect for the battle cry. It's not too overpowered, um, and it's not it's not uh, it's not a garbage card. I don't think a lot of people will be running this, but I think it's a, a fairly well balanced card. Feet of Strength, give a random taunt minion in your hand, plus five, plus five. I, I hate how it's give a random taunt minion, and you have to be running a taunt, and who's running the taunt? Uh, well, I mean, you could be running the taunts here. Um, I, I, I don't know what to think of this card right now. I want to give it a two out of five, because all these cards that have boosted your taunts in your hand... Um, you know, give your taunt minions pl in your hand plus whatever plus whatever have n have never really worked or taken off. Three mana for five five might be the card to do it. Um, but right now, I'm just gonna give that a a. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it a two star. I don't think anybody's gonna be playing that because there's really not a lot of taunts. Uh, it it could go well with some of the some wild minions that um, warrior have that are taunt. I just don't. I don't like it's a, a random taunt minion because it could hit something you don't want it to hit. And then you have to wait until you have a taunt minion to play it. Uh, taunt, equip a 3-2 sword. So this is a taunt that it could hit. And obviously if it hits this would be nice because now you'll have a 7-10 on 4. So we have to kind of think and step back. This might actually work out well. I'm going to give Feet of Strength. I'm going to bump that up to a 3 now. Because of the way that you can curve this out on a four. So you could put this and have this be a 7-10, which is huge, but you have to do nothing on turn three. 
But you come back and you have a 3-2 sword also. So that's pretty big. This uh, the Sword Eater is really good too because he has Taunt. He gives you a Fiery Win Axe, which we know costs 3, used to cost 2. Um, so that's worth 3 stats. So mana-wise, this is good. I like this card. I'm going to give the Sword Eater a 4, a solid 4 out of 5. Um, really, really, really awesome card <clears throat> to play. I, I, I'm going to be excited to play Warrior and play that card and get some Taunts. Um, and, and the battle cry is not conditional on corrupt. Tent Trasher Rush costs one less for each friendly minion with a unique minion type. Okay, let's be honest. If, you, if you're running, if you have just a single minion on board, this is a four five five rush. A four five five rush is nothing to sneeze at, and, and you're you're almost never gonna play this for five for five, um, unless you're like desperately trying to knock something out. Um, you're gonna have a minion on board. You can easily play a minion. Um, this is a really nice card. It's not as good as the uh, Bladed Lady. <laughs> uh, she's she puts this to shame, in my opinion. This is, however, since you're going to be getting uh, playing this for four as a five-five rush. I think that's a great card. I think this is a five-star card. I really like it. It it might be a four, but I think you'll get use out of it. Um, uh, I think you'll get. You know, yeah. No, because even if you have two, you can play this as a three mana, five, five. I, I'm, put, I'm keeping this at a five. I really think that's a five star card. Ringmaster's Baton. After your hero attacks, give a mech, dragon, and pirate in your hand. Plus one. Plus one. Obviously, you have to be running a menagerie type of a, uh, a build and a deck, which you can. But let's say that you only have a mech and a pirate in your hand. It's still a plus one, plus one to them. That's still pretty good. Still kind of helps out those taunts. And it's here's the thing. It's only two cost. And you can run multiple of these weapons. You don't have to run one. It's not a legendary weapon. A two cost, um, one, three, give minions to your hand a buff. That's pretty good. I, I like it. It's solid. I give it a four. Nice uh, rounded card. Ringmaster Watley. Draw a mech, dragon, and pirate. Now here you go. This is a perfect tut tutoring draw. Five for three, five isn't the best. Um, he doesn't have rush, so he's going to stick, but it is a draw. You can draw specific, draw three cards. That's pretty big. I like it. Um, I give him a four cost. I, border, it could be a five. He could see a lot of play um, in those Menagerie decks. I don't think anybody's been playing a Mech, Dragon, and Pirate. I think we're going to see more like um, Mech. And let's say you play him, and you've already drawn all your mechs. So you've already drawn your pirates. So he could just be a 5-3-5 five, five, draw a mech and a dragon from your deck. So um, not bad. He doesn't have a tag. It would be cool if he had like a beast tag, right? Because he looks like a beast. That's what I would kind of get to. But um, I think if he had a beast tag on it, that would be nice with the tent thrasher. Uh, so. All right. ETC God of Metal after a friendly min after a friendly rush minion attacks. Deal two damage to the enemy hero. So this has good combo potential with, say, the bumper car. Because the bumper car could come out. It deals rush, and then you do two damage to the enemy hero, and then you do the other two rushes, and they do two damage. So you could you could chain this and do uh, essentially you know ten twelve damage to the enemy hero. Um, so you play this, you got two four six, uh, and then two four six. You could do this plus this, so you got two four another one six, and then play all. So for ten mana, you could play all these, add those rush uh, attack, and do twelve damage to enemy hero. That's pretty big, pretty significant. Um, but it's going to cost 10 mana and you don't have anything big up. You're just doing damage to the enemy face. But that could be good with the bomb deck because, you, you know, you're eating away and chipping away at their health while those bombs are coming. I really like this. Even even a 2-4 or a 2-1-4 is, uh, like we said, it's 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 kind of crappy stats because you get a 1. Uh, 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 Priest had a 1 cost, 1-4, one which was, eh, you know, no one really played it. Um, this is a 2-1-4, so again, eh. But it combos. Um, I don't think you're going to see people playing that combo too much. But, you know, you get two damage here, two damage here, two damage there. Six damage is nice. Um, I, I give it a three. It, it, it could it could get out of hand, but I don't think it's going to get too bad. I think we'll be overall all right. All right I got enough time to run through. I just want to run through a couple of the neutral minions. You guys can go on here um, <clears throat> and check these out. Uh, one of the ones I want to hit is a safety inspector. Uh, safety inspector. Um is a really good uh, one cost one three. You can drop your lowest card. So let's say that you had a uh, um, a big, 
you mulligan, you got this, and you have two big uh, cost cards in hand. Safety Inspector's cool. You can play that on one. You can grab, uh, ditch one of those cards, your lowest cost one, and grab something else. So it can kind of help draw and get rid of something. Especially, I love minions where they're good in the early game and they're good in the late game. So Safety Inspector, if you draw him late, that's good. You can draw him, have a chance at drawing your bigger attack minion or your bigger spells. So those are pretty good. Um, another one I want to check out here is a prize vendor battle cry. Both players draw a card. Now I'm not rating these yet. I might rate these later. Um, <clears throat> except for maybe a few of them here. Both players. This is Murloc, right? So now we have another Murloc. So Mill is going to be huge and wild. You can guarantee that the rogue is going to be playing this. This is another Mill Murloc card. Um, you, we could very well see, uh, <clears throat> The return of um, um, some kind of weird shenanigans with milling, um, I, I don't know. But this is a cool card. Two, two, three. Hey, you draw a card, I draw a card. Everything's cool. Um, <clears throat> no double battle cries, but really cool card. I think that's cool. They added that back in. Um, the the Rock Rager, pretty cool, right? Two, uh, two cost, five, one elemental with a taunt. So you could pretty much uh, throw something up to get rid of something big. Here's the big one I want to talk the showstopper. Let's talk about the showstopper, guys. Death rattle, silence all minions. Okay, it doesn't. You oh, I have to. I have to silence all the minions, <clears throat> but he has to die first, so I don't get the silence effect right away. Well, I want you to imagine for a second that a paladin has liberum. They have their liberum paladin. They got their their minions up, and uh, and you can play this right, and you can you can kill this too. So you could backstab this. You can penance it as a priest. You, there's so many ways. A lot of classes have an easy way to deal with silencing all minions and dealing damage. This is you. You're gonna see this card a lot. Mark my words. You will see the showstopper a lot. It's gonna silence all, all these decks like Liberum Paladin where they're buffing minions. This is the card that people are gonna play, and it's gonna put Liberum Paladin right on its butt it's gonna hurt liberum paladin is gonna get knocked down a tier because of this card so many people running this card especially aggro can you imagine aggro running this card it's a two three two if you put up anything oh you wanted to put up a uh, a taunt i'm gonna silence it you wanted to zoth and get up all your death rattles i'm gonna silence you can't do anything when this card is on board oh this is gonna be such a nasty card Mark my words, Showstopper, 5 out of 5 card. This is beautiful. This is what people have been wanting for a long time. Um, I, I just don't see... Uh, I don't see people not running that card. It's, it's such a good card. Uh, I know I'll be running it in, um, in, my, uh, in my Rogue decks and a lot of other decks. It's just, uh, overall, great, great, great effect. Um, let's look at the... Uh, another one I wanted to look at was, <clears throat> oh, let's see, um, right here, the, the Circus Medic is pretty big, restore four health, corrupt, deal four damage instead, so this, um, let's keep in mind, this is going to be a card that Shutterwalk in Shaman in Wild is going to be playing, so we're going to see that, I'm sure, um, same with the Knife Vendor, so they can restore four health or deal four damage, um, I'm sorry, not the Circus Medic at Shutterwalk, the Knife Vendor. Deal 4 damage to each hero, that's pretty big. A lot of aggro is going to be running this, right? So they're going to slap this down, um, hit you with face, and then have something on board. Uh, a, a lot of, um, a lot of decks I imagine will be running this, this gun. This also, this 3-5-4, first of all, a 3-5-4 five, four is good, but with Wind Fury... This is a card you can't you don't sneeze at this card. This card can get nasty real quick. You know, you dump it four three, and all of a sudden on your next turn you hit it with the five the blessing of uh, authority, and it's a it's a plus five plus five, and all of a sudden you have an eight an eight uh, ten d with wind fury, right? So do not sneeze at the fantastic firebird. Uh, this is a card I think this is a four possibly five out of uh, five out of five card. I'm gonna give it a four out of five because I think a lot of people are gonna abuse that wind fury mechanic. Um, this is, uh, the Carnival Clown is, uh, it's gonna see, um, if you buff this in your hand and then you corrupt it, so you have to play a 10 cost to corrupt it first, which you can discount it with, uh, with Priest, 
and you can fill copies. So this you could put a whole board up. The problem is when you resurrect it, um, you're gonna when you resurrect it, it's only gonna be a four four taunt. <clears throat> I like the claw machine, uh, targeted draw, a minion. This is pretty cool, especially it has rush. Uh, let's talk about these real quick. Um, Cthune, I think you're going to see a lot of Cthune decks. A lot, a lot, a lot of Cthune decks. This is probably going to be the number one deck that you see played. Um, deal 30 damage because all those Cthune cards are really good. They're really good control cards. I think Cthune is going to be the, of the, all the four guards, going to be the number one you see play. Um, your Charge the Defiler is going to be good with all the Corrupted cards. Um, we got to see how good these Corrupted cards actually and how uh, can people play them. Um, it's actually, uh, obviously a very big power spike. We might see some OTKs uh, if you get those Corrupted cards to be zero and they deal damage to face. Um, we'll have to go back and revisit that, but this would be a, this is more of a combo um, deck style. Yog saron again, we're, um, spill, pe people are going to play this for the fun factor. Now, uh, it has all the chan all the things that it can do are good. Fill your hand with zero cost spells. That's huge. Destroy all minions. Gain their stats. That's huge. Fill your board with minions. That's huge. Um, the pyroblast obviously um, you you don't want it to hit that if you have low health and they have high health, but it's still a chance, right? So Yog Saron will most likely see a lot of play as well. I just think we're gonna see Cthune more because those five those four cards they get at the start of the game are pretty big. Um, the Nazoth, we will for sure see, and I think we're going to see that, um, pretty big in a lot of, uh, Priest and a lot of, uh, Hunter, I imagine, with the mechs. Um, it's be interesting to see what people come up with, um, on this. They're obviously going to be using the uh, Amalgam too, so it'll always summon this, as many of these. So you could actually kill a lot of these off and get the Nazoth. It'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, so... That said, guys, I've got to head out. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, watching this video, and uh, you guys take it easy out there.